Mike Tist. Tist in the mic, Mike Tist. This is blowing out the audio. Let's see. Everything working? Hank stream, mic on. Music's on. Juggling the headset. Sounds all right to me. Sounds all right to me. I'm going to turn off this headset. Looks and sounds worky. Well, howdy, howdy, another night. Welcome back to another Country Fried live stream. We're here tonight going to work on a large lad. Those of y'all in the community who know a little bit about what's been going on. I've been working frantically on some projects trying to get finished up. Uh, for the semester and just got my final big project finished overnight with a frantic frantic session of art creation we hung out in the discord folks were uh, exposed to some raw emotions that go along with school uh, and some cool art and today we went in and, and installed the art and now, now I ain't got nothing else left to do but focus on the channel for the rest of the semester. I guess that's not 100% true. I do have a final test, like a proper final, and an essay due before the end of the semester. But this semester's almost done, and I am looking forward to that. Anyhow, welcome, welcome. If you ain't been to a Country Fried live stream, here we uh, we hang out, we paint some models, and uh, you know talk about anything and everything under the sun or the stars. You day person, you night person, all are welcome. Anyhow, tonight we're going to be working on this 15 millimeter scale rifleman. And this is going to be painted up in Grey Death Legion colors. So, I think I'm going to do a little, little airbrushing. Maybe get an initial, initial spray coat on it. A little size comparison for y'all. We're going to hit it with some grays on grays on grays. And then uh, a little bit of red and maybe a hand-painted... Um, insignia or something and I think maybe even some decals these flat panels will work really nice for it um, yeah also uh, yeah 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 under the cube indeed Trying a little bit different setup tonight with this uh, camera up here. Let's see if that works out. Um, and there's no pressure uh, on filming this. This is kind of an experimental piece um, before the filming gets done later for this Great Death Legion project. So just gonna just gonna go to it and relax and paint up tonight. Okay, so to get started. I'm, I'm drawing my I'm blanking out here there was something I needed to do oh yes I need to grab my phone real quick so I have a way to access reference materials if I could figure out where I said I'll be right back I see it I see it I also need to protect my get on the kitty cat apron and get rolling pizza cat at that pizza space cat the best kind of cat okay so um i guess right to we're gonna be doing some spraying here 
with the airbrush. And start out with some priming. Maybe we'll do a, a bit of a gradient on the grays. I'm even thinking we could lay down the um, the initial gray tones of the um, camo pattern using the airbrush. So let's try out, I've got some gray primer. Actually got some old gray that needs to be finished. So let's finish that one first. Got some black and some white Stano Res primers. And it looks like this one's really separated out. So this uh, again goes to show like how bad Sometimes you get these Stino Res primers and they've been sitting in a warehouse for a million years. So you need to give them a, give them a little stir. I'm just gonna take our end of our paintbrush, agitate all that separated out pigment. Yeah, it's, it's bad separated. Heck, I bet I could drop a stir ball or two in there too. I got this uh, thing of stainless mixing balls, stainless steel mixing balls. That'll probably help out. But when the paint's this separated, you can't just trust your vortex mixer to to do all the work. Gotta do a little bit of that preemptively yourself. I thought I had a thought I had some chopsticks here at the workstation for this purpose, but I guess I don't. Alright, let's see if that did pretty good. Give a little shake. Get the stir ball moving around, then whack it on our vortex mixer. All right. We got our black. We got our gray. The gray sounds like it's decently mixed up. Mm. It's also sealed shut with paint. Hopefully it just that's good enough to get it going. And then we'll do the white as well. Now I'm thinking Again, we could do this up with with just a mix of these primer colors as the base as the base color for this project. So let's get to that and get it rolling. Now I don't know much about the Gray Death Legion. I just know gray on gray on gray is where we're going. And that should be good enough. Always with the good enough is good enough. A little bit of red on there. A little bit of green, I think, for the cockpit. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now yeah, let's get this uh, get this respirator on real quick, Black. Always check it for spiders first. Last thing I want to do is inhale an eight-legged homie. This thing. We got the spray booth on hand, ready to roll. Couple of these. This lad, and we can get rolling. Just need to tie this thing a little better. My apron has come undone already. Is I tied a piss poor knot? Hard enough to do behind your back. And then you add in the gloves. And it just exacerbates everything.
doing it all by feel. All right, there we go. Hope y'all can hear me all right. I, I kind of messed up the uh, the decibel settings on the audio mixer. It looks a little high, but I'm not quite peeking into the yellow. Uh, but yeah, all right, so. I did a little preemptive cleaning of this. I hope it's clean enough to work. And we're going to start with a nice black prime on this guy. Or gal. I guess I kind of do think of the rifleman as more of a uh, she. Like a boat, like a ship. Kind of makes sense to me. It should be a, a gun platform. All right. Now that is an awful sound. You gotta be kidding me. 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 Jesus. Lordy Lord. I hear a leak. I have a leak somewhere. Is that it? Holy moly. Hey, it wouldn't be a stream here if things didn't go wrong as soon as we got started. All right, it seems to be working all right. But I can see already lost things. <laughs> Anyhow, let's see if that's working. All right, it's working. Ooh, it's about to about to have have to pivot and hand prime this gal. But it appears like it is not as bad as I thought. I was fearing for my uh, um, compressor there for a moment, but the. Uh, the moisture valve on the regulator was just jammed open. A quick little fiddle into it, and it uh, is no longer jammed open. So yeah, the show can go on as intended. So we're just going to lay down a uh, initial coat of some black primer. And then, you know, my initial instinct is always to put a zenithal on it. But I think instead of doing the, the full, like, black to white zenithal, we'll just hit it with the, um, with the black and then a partial zenithal style spray from above with the gray and see how that looks and then maybe make a lighter gray we'll we'll see as we get there i definitely want to use the airbrush to make light work of this because it is a big model so we'll see see how much we can get done in the uh the normal three hours and maybe even go a little longer tonight. So yeah, if y'all ain't what if y'all ain't familiar with the uh, Country Fry Minis paint streams, uh, it's looking like we're gonna do these normally every Wednesday. Uh, this week was a little special because I had to get a major project done and. This rifleman, in fact, is for the Locust Labs Icons 
painting contest. Um, I'm not going to aim to try and win nothing, but I do want to get some representation in over there. And see if I can't paint up a rifleman in a single evening. I, I think I can. I think I can. And I'm also realizing now that I'm hitting this model with so much primer that unless I find another model to hit with some spray, y'all may be stuck watching far too much paint drying and I don't want that. So I might run across the room here in a moment and get some other models. I've got some other mechs that could take a little paint. Okay. I recall using the... Uh, the hair dryer during one of the streams to try and accelerate some paint and it it was doing some awful stuff with the audio so I think we'll skip that yeah and what I'll do is I'll prime a few other lads while I'm waiting let me run across the room real quick like just got some over at the computer desk over there Just a second. Okay. So I guess I'm a little ill prepared, y'all. A little ill prepared tonight. Let's see. Is this? Let's move that down a little bit. Come back up there. Yeah. We got a little Marauder 2 here. I think I'm going to show it a little love. It's got some mold lines. And we can use this as a side project to buy a little time uh, to let that rifleman dry up. Now. I gotta give Catalyst models any negative mark at all. I think it'd be that the uh, the mold lines are really bad, like really bad. They are cheap models, and they quite often look cheaply produced, which is unfortunate. But it's a small price to pay for the low barrier to entry. I mean, I, I can't really think of another miniatures game that you can just buy in for about 20 bucks. What's a Lance run? The Lance boxes are like 23, 20, 
$22.99, $23.99, something like that here in the U.S. Real cheap. Uh, but, again, the flip side of that is that if you want to get a pretty paint job, you're going to deal with some pretty heinous mold lines from time to time. This Marauder 2 here is especially, especially gnarly. So I'll just take my favorite little hobby knife. Wait until you see my mold lines. Oh, yes. You're working on um, handmade molds. I could see where that, that could be an issue. I had some, I did a little um, bit of recasting for um, an old out of production Infinity model. Um, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. And it had some, it had a little bit of mold lines. Uh, but other than that, the casting quality came out really nice. It's kind of remarkable how well uh, you can capture the detail with the silicone rubber mold. And I use the uh, the starter set stuff from Micromark. This is also a pretty good deal. It's like a hundred bucks. Now you don't get much, mind you, enough to make and eh, maybe two solid two-part molds, depending on how big you make it. Um, but it does come with all the mixing cups and the clay and the mold release agents and some resin, so. It's enough to make some copies of, of stuff that you need. I'm planning on doing a, um, a piece of content about molds and casting uh, to make some bases to replace, well, the forest bases for my U.S. Ariadnan forces, my um, Coca-Cola Rangers are on Antenasitis Workshop Deep Forest Bases, and that company went out of business over, over COVID. So unfortunately, those bases cannot be found. I have searched. I keep an eye out on eBay, but um, people don't people don't seem to carry those, even though they have other ones from that from that producer. And the Nate says they're going to be heinous. Going to have some heinous mold lines. Yeah. I mean, it's a relative term, right? Although I am complaining about these, and they're really... Honestly, they're not too bad. They're just, you know, very obvious, and they're running across some inconvenient details. But our hobby blade and our good friend here, the Army Painter file. I'm using the triangular file here. We'll make short work of cleaning them up. And really, it's just to buy a little time to let that their black primer dry on my rifle. This one's really bad though, right by the cockpit there. And actually it's got, I'd even say that's a little bit of a mold slip here uh, that's running right across the cockpit glass. It's just a really, really bad spot right here for it to be, have a mold line like that. use a little little better expert placement of these mold join points but I guess it's not the point they're cheap they're really cheap they're readily available and they're good enough yeah it is a little unfortunate that the uh 
drop the hot take here. Catalyst plastics, good sculpts, nice revitalization of, of the of the mechs. Kinda bad quality plastics as far as minis go. But hey, again, it's like twenty bucks. What, twenty four dollars for your for your Lance of Max? Like that is a selling point. And if you don't particularly care about your mold lines and you're just painting them up, getting them done and getting them on the table, not even an issue. And honestly, I shouldn't care so much on this. It's going to be painted in Camon as well. Oh, Nightbot's, um, Nightbot's random factoid is working. I was wondering. So I got Nightbot set back up to do some stuff. Nightbot says, there was a snail glued to a specimen card in the British Museum mid-1800 that spent four years glued there before scientists realized it was still alive. Kind of feel like that's a citation needed moment there, Nightbot. I don't know if I believe that. Four years. Could a snail live for four years without food? Seems plausible. I'm assuming snails are ectothermic animals and don't have to do calorie consumption to regulate their heat. the word of the day, ectothermic, like lizards and crocodiles. They do not generate their own internal heat like us. We are endothermic. All right. Swig of some uh, Crystal Geyser, and we're going to toss back on this uh, respirator. All right. Let's hit this little lad with a little bit of paint. Our Rifleman is almost dry, still a little shiny. That leg's a little saturated, but should be our... To it. Let's toss in a little black. Now, turn back on our compressor and uh, start priming up this here Marauder. I might do it in a little gentler passes, I think take a little longer to do to get it looking all right I hope y'all can see all right I'm trying a new camera angle tonight in hopes that it stays fairly focused looks like it's decently focused I will upgrade the, the webcam at some point in the new year. I should have taken this approach with the rifleman. I got a little uh, overzealous with the application. 
but when you're priming out of the airbrush, if you do these very minuscule um, bursts of, of paint, like extremely light coats, if you do it that way, it basically is dry instantaneously. Uh, and you don't have to sit here and uh, paint on a separate model so that your audience don't have to watch paint dry. Uh, plus, it just, you know, helps to ensure that the, the coat is really even and light and not gunking up any details. Yeah, you know, all that good stuff. It all works together. This here Marauder 2 is part of a lance I'm putting together with uh, just some generic camouflage. Going for like a deserty type color scheme. Uh oh. I have a clog. Oop, did it bust free? I think it just busted free. Let's see. Yeah. No. Not really. Kind of 50 50. I think I let that uh, cap, I think I let the brush sit there too long. How would. How would vegan ham fisting work? Um, great question. Uh, let's see. Tofu? You can't really tofu fist. That's too many, uh, too many syllables, right? Um, what's a good... What's a good alternative for vegan hand fisting? I really don't know there. You got me stumped, good sir. My mind is not sharp or fast enough to come up with a idea for that. All right, so whenever we start Whenever you're going in between colors, you always want to really rinse out the cup here. So we're going to take our little spray bottle and give that cup a nice good spray out, a rinse out, and then we'll hit the spray out pot as well. And now normally if, like when I'm done, I'll want to... I want to clean it with acetone, but for now, we're going to put a little bit of water in the cup so it stays nice and moist, and then examine this for how dry it is. It's almost there. Uh, that's probably really out of focus to, to put it that close. Bean fisting. Now I think it works. You bean fist things. What else, what else would work? I, I don't, I think you just ham fisted anyway. Log? Log? Log is vegan, yeah, it's all plant based. Um, what am I looking for? Here we go. All right, so we've got this, this gray primer that's, it's almost done. But I think there's enough to paint this, probably. Yeah, we've got a few little spots that are still a little shiny and wet. So, I need to buy a few, eh, about two minutes. I'll show you all this lance here that I'm working on. So, we got our Marauder 2. Uh, and then it's just a bunch of Star League mix. So, I've got the Exterminator, the Guillotine. And a Lancelot, and this Lancelot kind of shows 
uh, more or less the color scheme I'm going for. Kind of like a, a striped desert camo, kind of inspired by the mechs of Mech Warrior 4. So that's another just, you know, extra little paint up for stuff in between episodes or whatnot. Okay, so uh, let's get an idea of what Grey Death Legion is going to look like. And we'll check Grey Death Legion camo specs. Let's kind of pick, let's pick out a, pick out a paint job that kind of works. So this is kind of what I'm thinking right here, ish. Looks like it's a nice two-tone gray. Can I not? There, there we go. I do that, then it should should be able to zoom in on it. So it's like um, we got these darker gray tones, and we've got these mid gray tones, and it even looks like there's some lighter grays in there. So at least a two-tone scheme. Maybe a three-tone scheme. And I think... I think we can make that work. Uh, we'll start out by hitting it with this, this gray from above. And then we'll switch over to uh, a little bit of brush work. So, uh, we've got our clean airbrush. It's been rinsed out. Give our Stana Riz a good shake up. See how that color works. We're gonna do this kind of like a, you know, basically a, basically a zenithal. So just gonna hit it from like a straight down type angle. Hit it in circular motions. And the idea here is kind of we want to keep some of that some of that black in the shadows it'll help to create some artificial shadows for us later and save some serious time just you know put it from the top down Nice gray, gray starting, starting points. And heck, I think I'm even gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of gray with, I don't know, maybe like a drop or two of the white Santa Res in there too. Just a little bit, just the tiniest bit. We'll go three drops. I think that's enough. Give us a stir. Stir, stir, stir. That is not white enough. So let's do another, let's double that. Let's do another three drops. And three drops there. Stir it up. There we go. And we're gonna hit this even lighter and even more just straight down. out the excess give it a good spray I think what I'm gonna do now is to um, turn down the pressure quite a bit 
and try to get some really, really fine lines with a darker, a darker gray. Yeah, Let's give it a spray out. Let's crank down this this spray. I got it at like 20 psi now. About half of what I had. I, I usually run the airbrush at like 30 to 40 psi. Pretty high actually. Uh, but we're gonna take our take our gray again. I think about a 50-50. We'll do a 50-50 of the gray plus the black. Get a nice dark gray. Grab a different brush. I'm gonna stir that up. Stir, stir, stir. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that looks about right. And I think what we're trying to achieve here is uh, some very, very light. Here, I'll put this out so we can kind of see. I'm just wanting to do some very light little streaky, splotchy patterns. Something like that. Very fine, very fine work on it. So, we're going to take our lead and we're just going to start putting, putting little, that may not be dark enough. It is not quite dark enough. But you know, that it'll serve as, this will serve as a third tone. So we're just going to stick with it for now. We're going to put some put some mid tone grays on it. Just a little here, a little there. Like at this point, it's kind of just working as some color modulation, if anything. But it was not dark enough for what I was going for. So now we need to, we need to add a little more black into the mix. Put that here, that there. All right. All right. Let's dump out about, I don't know, half of it. We'll do half of it dump it out in the dump pot and we're just going to fill this up with black now I guess the gray is actually a really powerful pigment uh, compared to this black and even still it's not quite not quite dark enough yeah maybe maybe it is maybe it is yeah that's looking a little better that looks right. Okay. All right, we're going to do the same thing. And actually, I'm going to come down a little further on the PSI. About as low as I can go and have it still spray. Let's try this again. I mean, it's 
It's still not quite right. I could definitely go darker. So I think we're going to go darker. We'll just do the same thing here. We'll do some some splotches. Just some splotches and some striping of this darker darker gray tan. I need to turn it up some. It's, it's actually uh it's spattering a little bit. Which sucks. But yeah, there we go. Just want to put some some areas of darker time. Okay, and we're gonna do that same thing again. I'm gonna dump out basically all of that. There's just a little bit in the cup left. We're gonna add a whole bunch of black into that because that black uh, is not as strong a pigment as the uh, as the gray. It would appear. But this should do it, surely. Surely that's dark enough. Okay. All right, so same deal. Let's try again. I'm making it up as I go. And I think this time, instead of stripes, like those other applications. We're just going to make these like little blobs of color here and there. A little bit there, a little bit there. A little bit here, a little bit there. Just like trying to avoid any semblance of a pattern. As is the point of camouflage. Here, right there. I don't have a plan at all for this. Just, I'm gonna keep going back and forth till it feels right. Till it starts to look like something. Then I'm gonna hit it with some dry brushing to bring out the edges. I might come back in with the lighter gray again. We're just going to layer these grays on. Like I said, gray on gray on gray. And then we can start putting on our metallics and do a real quick and easy uh, gray depth rendition. All right. I think that's looking all right. Uh, Zimmer, hello and welcome. I love seeing your Battletech models keep up the great work. 
Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm seeking to get back to uh, a little more Battletech content. I know that, that the work I've been doing lately has strayed a bit away from that. And I don't want to forget the, uh, the core of what is Country Fried Minis. Uh, which, of course, is uh, kind of a kind of a Battletech channel. Um, I never expected it, but you know the um, the urban mech, the big urban mech, kind of cemented that that's what we're doing here. All right, so that last layer on this here made the lad a little too dark, I think, for the most part. So, I really want to hit it, I want to hit it with a little more of that lighter gray again, and then I think we'll be done with the airbrushing. So let's go back to our Steinal Res gray, and we're going to put a little white in that too. The Armored Core video was nice. Oh, thanks! That one was, um, that one was a lot of fun. That model was a nightmare to work with. Uh, but it, it's fun and now it kind of it just lives <laughs> uh, she just lives right up here on the shelf uh, I, I did manage to put it back together after the uh, after dropping it on the ground uh, the things you do for, for a bit okay so we've got our gray what rolls downstairs, a loner in pairs, then over the neighbor's dog. It's every, it's by every girl and boy. It's log, log, log. Yes, indeed. God, I can, it's, that's burned into my brain. Also, hello, Emery. Welcome to another uh, nonsensical stream here in the bullshit corner. We are airbrushing up a... Oof, shit, too much came out there. That is a bright white spot. Let's see if I can't tamp that down. I think that uh I think that gray wasn't quite mixed up enough right there. Well, we just want to try and get little spots. Little spots of a lighter gray. Um, sometimes stripes, sometimes splotches. Like a bit here and there. And of course, this model will have a whole bunch of. There's a whole bunch of vents on it. And little bits and bobs that'll be done up in done up in metallics later on. Also, let me take a moment to once again mention if y'all are finding this via the algorithm or aren't already part of the community, check out in the description down below if you want to join up over at the Discord. We share hobby pictures, we talk, we have a good time, we have biscuits. Um, I don't limit Discord membership to, you know, just members, so everyone's welcome. I'd love to see what you're working on in your own hobby lives. So, yeah, check it out if you'd like. I also do commissions! So if you want to get a commission, uh, in before the holiday, check out my link at fiverr.com. It's in the description down below. Or you can check out countryfriedminis.com. There's some fun links over there, including a stream schedule, a calendar for future events. I think that clog has gotten worse. Love seems to fall. I don't know what you mean. Love seems to fall out. I'm not super. I guess I'm not super fast in catching these comments. Uh, 
Okay, Nightbot has shared with us another factoid. It says every Pixar movie contains a reference to the Pixar movie that comes after it. That seems... Is that true? I'm not 100% sure I trust these random facts that Nightbot has decided to grace us with. Is that, is that verifiable? Is it actually a fact? Who knows? All right, so we got some gray modulation on our model here. It looks all right, good enough. And it's always good to remember that good enough is indeed good enough. And you don't got to kill yourself for no paint job. Again, I'm not going into this this here painting contest to win it. I just want to have an entry and toss mine in there and see how, uh, see if folks like it. Okay. Plus, uh, this here model is kind of a experiment, actually, for the future... Great F Legion paint-ups coming very soon. Okay. I think with that right there, let's pull this needle out. Oh yeah. So you definitely can't see that on camera, but I got some dry tip going on here. Uh, as always, I'm going to pull my needle out when I store the airbrush. I'm not sure if other folks do that. It's just my method for keeping it in running order. But let's get this. Let's get this here thingamabob out of the way. Take off the respirator. Oh boy. Simmer says, at this scale, will you attempt to freehand the GDL emblem or do you have larger water slides? I am, in fact, going to freehand the GDL legion um, or GDL symbol. I'm not sure if we're going left or right with it, but we're going to put it on one side and then I've got these. If I could get them off here. I have a small collection of numbers from Fighting Piranha. And I'm going to put a number on the mech. I don't know, maybe number 66. That seems fun. But yeah, I'll definitely freehand it on there. Okay, so next step here, I think we want to... I think we want to dry brush. I think that's what we're doing. So, let's prep up a dry brush and start putting some detail on this model. And because it's a big lad, I think we want a fairly sizable dry brush. So I'm gonna, is this, I'm sniffing it for mineral spirits. I'm not sure, some of these brushes I've used for oil paint. I think this one's safe. Another Nate says, I think ideally you should store your brush with the needle lubed and reinstalled after drying. Um, yeah, that sounds sounds very reasonable. I don't actually have anything to lube it with um, that I know of. So that, that I think that's something I should probably invest in. Okay digressing let's mix up I think we're going to take some golden carbon black and we're going to take a little bit of the Liquitex acrylic ink and mix up a nice light gray dry brush color um, so I like golden for its quality um, but it's, it's generally a little shiny but we'll tamp that down with the matte varnish at the very end, so it should work fine. Uh, Emery says, looks kind of like an Ariadna backward tech tag done in urban Greek campaign city camo. The Wehrmacht put on their Panzer IVs, which they had turned into infantry support tanks with snub howitzers. 
a demacrosization of design. You know, I think that's in a nutshell exactly what I'm going for. Uh, very fun, very fun imagery there. I gotta say, Emery, your 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 words are very colorful at times. It brings me great joy. Always a pleasure to have you here in the streams. All right, so we're going to do three drops of the golden black, three drops of water, and we'll start with three drops of the Liquitex white ink. And usually I don't even use white ink any, or white paint anymore. It's just this, this white ink stuff works really well. Uh, super pigment dense, doesn't get quite as chalky. Um, it, it must just be like a higher quality um what's the what's the white pigment titanium dioxide it must get smaller particle size or something which is a big problem with white because the um because the uh the molecule size of titanium dioxide itself is really big so it tends to be problematic although all that good I said about the uh, about the golden black is holding true here. It's very strong pigment, so I bet I bet I could have got away with just a single drop of black. So I'm adding in more and more white and kind of just spreading this paint out, and we'll turn it into a we'll turn it into a, a big piece of gray gradient here. So we'll do another five drops there as well. Um, in case y'all are interested in what's going on here with this paper towel, I ran out of paper towels and I've got these Boo Bomb Sustainable Salon Towels. They're like really... Mm, it, it's almost like a... like a really heavy duty dryer lint a dryer cloth dryer sheet is that what i'm trying to say yeah like a really heavy duty dryer sheet um i'm gonna give them a go tonight while i'm out of paper towels i did not have a chance to get to the store to pick any more up i think this gray is still not light enough let's do a little test on an edge somewhere kind of out of the way Let's try it right here. It's almost indistinguishable against this lighter gray, which might actually be what we want. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's let's start giving this this guy a go with this light gray. It's not really going to highlight up our lightest gray tone, but it's going to work wonders on on the darker gray sections. Make the X Defender less destroidy. Yes, well. Still a little too saturated. Just gonna hit these edges. We're gonna nick all the edges where we can. Not trying to go super heavy with the dry brush because we're gonna, after this coat, we'll lighten it up even more and Hit it again. Just wanna, this brush don't wanna let go. Just wanna nick the tips, nick the tip, nick the tips. And of course, you know, it, even if it's a little messy, that's fine, because we're gonna go back in with sponge chipping. Just, I guess I'm not only, I. How do I word this? How do I words? Um, I think what we're trying to demonstrate tonight is a simple way of approaching this style of paint job in a hurry. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. 
and I don't think you should have to either. So just a dry brush on some edges. Get some perfunctory effects on the model. I know that I'm capable of high-end painting if I really put my mind and time to it, but that's generally not what we're about here at Country Fried Minis. I much prefer the whole good enough is good enough approach. A good, a good friend of mine really helped me to get into that mindset when talking about getting armies done. Instead of having like Oh, I got my general painted and like two squads and I'm burnt out from spending so much time on these space marines. Instead, just like get them done. Just, you know, get them done. Get them on the table. It's great. People will still love your paint jobs. Just having, you know, three colors on them, a little bit of shading here and there. It's great. They don't have to be perfect. Ain't nobody asking perfection from you unless you're entering it into a competition. So let's just keep on with the dry brush and dry brush. Who's the dry brush? Who's the, the whisper dry brush? Is that Bill? Bill making stuff? Pretty sure it is. Excuse me. All right. So we'll go once around this mech. Make sure to get all the little nooks and crannies. I think. Who cares if it's a little messy? Because we're about to hit it again, anyways. To hit it again. I may ink wash this, I mean uh, oil wash this at the end. I'm not 100% decided yet, but if I do, that'll be like an off stream thing. Or maybe not, maybe it's just a, uh, we could do a, um, a wash with the Nuln oil and just keep it simple, keep it accessible. I know not everybody has oil washes in their collection, oil paints, but I do recommend getting a few, at least the two like primary colors. It is Bill, okay, yeah. Emery says hoi polloi hobby. Hoi polloi. I know that term. I know that term and it's it's in the brain somewhere. Okay. So we've now we've gone over this once with our lighter gray. It's kind of caught the edges here with the darker colors. Um, and that's fine. So now we want to take our white. Actually, I think I may need to, to legit bust out a white paint for this. I tend to avoid doing, uh, cause it's shit. Excuse my French. It's just, it's so bad. It's so chalky and chunky, but yeah, let's get out a little bit of GW white scar here. Make sure to stir it back up. A little bit of GW White Scar. It's real chunk. Yuck. God, I hate this paint. Get some of it out. Probably three dollops of it, maybe. You can see it's it's chunky. It's thick. It needs to be really reconstituted. I hate it. Hate your white paint, GW, it sucks. And we're gonna grab a little bit of our, grab a little bit darker, like medium gray and mix it in here. It is a really strong pigment. Yeah, you can see just that one little dip, dippery do there. And it is quite darkened, but that's fine. I think that's about the color we need. 
maybe a single drop of water in it. Seems about right to me. All right. We'll go back to our dry brush, dry brush and brush. And this one might even be a little bit too big for what I'm doing here. Hard to, hard to get all the bristles. Yeah, there we go. And we're gonna hit it again. Just trying to, trying to stay somewhat perpendicular to our edges. It ain't gotta be perfect. We do circular motions, and we're gonna favor this a little bit more towards the uh, towards the upper facing edges this time. Ooh, that was a little too much on there. It's fine. Who cares? A little bit extra gray. Give him some love. Hit those upper facing edges. Vampire tooth white. Becomes that bones are an off white even when bleached. Yeah. It's a good color name. I was actually uh, working with ChatGPT recently to have it write a script. I have a, I have a video idea of just doing a full video where ChatGPT writes the whole thing. And it came up with some really ridiculous paint names that were unironically really good. All right, Nightbot is talking pretty fast. I think I may need to reduce the rate at which it gives us factoids. But it appears that IKEA is an acronym which stands for Ingvar Kamprod Elmterid Agunnerjord, which is the founder's name, farm he grew up, and hometown. Thank you for the useless fact there, Nightbot. Yeah, I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Bones, bones off, off white, even when bleached. That is. I mean, that's why the color's called bleach bone, right? And it's not white. All right, this, this brush may just be too big for what I'm doing here. Now there it goes. It's really showing on this darker color. Just hit these edges. Because this is 15 mil, it's even better at taking up the color I think I didn't put enough out that's fine because we're about to do an even lighter white and I think in this case I could use off-white but um, I, I think the Great Eth Legion paint scheme needs to stay kind of cool and not um, not head into the warm territory. And I generally find that off-white colors tend to be a little warm. A little bit of that like eggshell-y type color. Like there's some tan in there. I'm gonna keep it cold. The chill of death. I mean, it's in the name. All right. Okay. Well, I say okay, and I'm about to hit it with another pass. I think that we want to get those edges. We want to get those edges to pop, because that's actually, you know, that's where the detail is. If we're hitting it with this, like, splotchy coloration, there's not really... It's not the pattern doing the doing the highlighting and stuff I think we're gonna hit this with one more layer of dry brushing <laughs> the P in Pteranodon is silent factoid indeed all right so learning the lesson from that last dollop we've got to put more white out this time 
because that brush is going to drink up a whole bunch and then not deposit it on our model very well. I think that ought to do. And we'll grab some of this to darken it down this time. God, this GW, your paint sucks. Not all of their paints suck. Some of the GW colors are really, really good. This color sucks. It's very disappointing. Almost as bad as, I, oh, there, there's a gray that's like, I think it's Ultalon gray. The ancient cat is invisible, factoid. Uh, that, is, that is true. And I mean, you know, you, you never pronounce the Ache, right? Isn't that the thing in the Spanish? Never pronounce the H. All right. So we've got an even lighter white or gray. And this time we are going to bias it on just the, the tippy tips, the sharpest and the most upper facing, just a little here and there. We want it, especially those areas that got a little too light and upwards facing edges. We need to keep, we want highlighting, but we also want a little distinction um, for the lower edges. So I think maybe like this knee here would probably get enough get enough light to justify a little bit there. Uh, or the, the thigh here and then the knee here is sticking out far enough that it would probably get lit. But I think like this thigh, I'm trying to stay on film here, this thigh would, would be very somewhat shaded here so I think that lighter gray is good enough without the white so we'll hit here and there and then we'll do the toesies I know they're kind of sheltered but I want to put a little distinction on those edges and then same on the back back here this this thigh hip situation that would be getting some light the tops of these backs of the guns and then this whole calf area here that is getting some light back of the foot there and then again I want the foot to stand out some so let's just hit that down here with a little bit not much but some yeah there we go and we're creating some hot spots of light now I think like a proper insane person I'm going to take a little bit of straight white just a bit put it in that drop of water that's already out there we go and we're just gonna we're gonna pump up those hot spots at the edges. Fun fact, rarely are they fun, often they're also incorrect. Amazing. Emery says, cadmium is an element. Linoleum is not an element. Factoid. But you can use linoleum to uh, cut prints into and make prints with. Speaking of... I've managed to secure my independent study in lithography, but I did not manage to secure enrollment in the other printmaking class I was trying to get into. San Francisco State has this problem where uh, they're cutting classes and they're you know, firing teachers and the administration is bumping their own pay. So, you know, 
the the art classes are very limited and hard to get into and you kind of need them for an art degree all right so we're taking that light that white that's straight white and we're hitting the hottest edges so you know here and there and then we're not putting it here or the knee because I want to kind of draw more focus towards the upper area of this model so we're just hitting the hot spots up here and I think you know we've got our gray we've got some highlight we've got some modulation going on it didn't quite give the the like the the blobby camo that I was going for I think I need a smaller nozzle in my airbrush to get a tighter tighter spread on that but I, I'm happy with this and that's that's what really matters here another Nate says bears can become quite large compared to much smaller things true nonsense welcome Nathan he says lithography is going to be more useful professionally I see I don't think I don't think litho will ever pan out into anything professional, but like I loved it when I took the first semester uh, of it and I need one more upper division course for the, for the BFA. So um, I just, I contacted the professor directly and asked about doing independent study, which would be awesome. It's just like very self-directed about building a portfolio um and most importantly it's a 600 level course so applicable to the bfa all right so we've got our lad or gal i should say i've been referring to this one i think of the riflemen more like a like a naval unit something about the big guns um so it's definitely even though it's called the riflemen it is it is a she in my mind I do default to calling mechs lads, but I think if I was piloting this machine, I would refer to her as a her. Lithographic process is what they use for book printing. Makes sense. Okay, so. I think next step here, we're going to start applying some metallics. And I do want to get back to that good old favorite. We're going to use our Jet Exhaust Vallejo Metal Color. And it's got a nice stir bar in it. Now this stuff even though we're going to be applying a lot of it, you just got to use a few drops at a time because it'll separate out really fast. It's good to keep in mind. We're using a two round for this. And I'm just going to like start attacking all these vents. I might do some in like glowing red hot. It's definitely crossed my mind to do that. But I don't know. I think I, I think I want to keep this paint job accessible. How can you paint a Great Death Legion rifleman in a single sitting, in a single afternoon, in like four hours? How far in are we? We're sitting at about 87 minutes currently. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah. Just gonna start filling in stuff. Emery says, Galaxy is not a colloquial adjective describing something's resemblance to a woman's chopping tool. Strain, force, reach, you tried hard, fact. <laughs> also, Nathan accuses me of being a brush licker. Am I actually a brush licker? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm indeed a brush licker. And as I say uh, time and time again, I am not advocating licking your brush. But I'm also not telling you you're wrong if you do it. 
uh, it does, it removes the paint, it softens and moistens the brush, and it reshapes the tip all in one swift action. And, you know, generally the paints you're using are non-toxic. <laughs> so, I'm not telling you to lick your brush. Let me, let me be very, very clear about that. But yeah, uh, it totally works. Um, I find it most useful when I make a mistake and need to clean it, clean the brush very, very quickly while the paint is still wet. You just lick the, lick the paint off and hit it with your freshly moistened, clean brush. Oh, this chassis has so many vents on it. And they're all going silver. Every, well, it's not silver, it's jet exhaust. I get more of a field gun vibe, which would definitely be male, but she's your big stonky gal, so sex her as you will. Oh, uh, yes. Field gun? Yeah, I could see that. Um, I'm thinking, that, like, the, the double cannon... I guess that it's almost like a quad cannon. It it makes me think of a of the deck of a of a naval vessel, of a destroyer or something. I generally think of the doofy, the goofy, those silly old mechs as the lads. Like Sentinel, that, that is very obviously a silly little lad. Salamander, silly lad. I don't know, maybe Salamander could could be could be uh, anthropomorphized as female. It's kinda in that territory. It's weird how we uh, ascribe those. Smallest thing ever photographed is shadow of an atom. Nightbot is dropping facts too, too frequently. I need to adjust that, uh, which will have to happen later. So um, yeah, let me know uh, if if it's too much. If you think it's too much, I think it's a little too much. Uh, I'll, I'll decrease it by like, I don't know, another three to five minutes on the frequency. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, for the longest time, Nightbot was just not triggering any of the the chat commands. It's it's even supposed to like spam you like once every 20 minutes or something about the Discord. And then it's like every 80 something minutes supposed to say something about the Patreon page. I don't have it quite dialed in yet, unfortunately. But I'm learning. I'm still learning. I don't know things. I'm a grognard lost in a modern world. <laughs> I don't think about boats like ever. Um, I rarely think about boats. Um, I would like to play some naval matches of, of Battletech. I think it'd be a lot of fun to do. I think I posted about it in the um, in the Discord. I want to replicate. There's a series of missions in MechWarrior 4 where you're like you're defending a coastal installation and like waves of. I want to say they're condors. And some other, maybe a Pegasus, but there's waves of hovercraft coming in to attack these buildings, and like you got to go, you peel off to deal with them, and then as you do, this like, I, I want to say it's like a destroyer or, or frigate, I don't know the difference. Uh, a big ship comes in, and you got to deal with it, and it's it's really fun, tough to take down. Your mechs aren't super great there. 
Emery says, in Macross, the Defender Destroid was mainly a walking anti-air turret. It put out a lot of flak really fast and had a radar on tap for tracking incoming. Yeah, that's, um, you know, that's the fluff purpose of, of the Rifleman, really, in uh, Battletech. It doesn't really get that kind of representation like it should. But then again, if you're playing with... Um, if you're playing with aerospace assets anyways, it's already like a whole layer of complexity that saps a lot of fun out of the game. In theory, it, it, it would be awesome, but in practice, it's, it's um, not great. Not great at all. I think maybe if you had a really awesome like game master to help with that, It'd be good. Alright, I think that's all the vents on the back. So we've got the calves, the thighs. These here, I think... We might make those colored like, like that's reactor heat areas. Uh, I don't remember anything from Macross except Protoculture. I don't remember anything from Macross at all because I never watched it. I meant to. Hey, Nightbot did do the thing. Come on over to the Country Fried Discord and share your work. And that link should work. I don't know if it does or not. I'm trying. I'm trying to modernize the streams. We'll get there. These paint streams will be ideally every Wednesday night, 6 p.m. PST. Come hang out while we talk nonsense and paint models. If you found this stream by the algorithm, just know that this stuff happens on the regular in addition to the content, which comes out every now and then here at the Country Fry Minis bullshit corner but if you come hang out live you can hear sirens as many many cop cars and ambulances drive by another Nate again man magnetize the ceiling both layers on one map never played tabletop battle tech but it should work just I guess my big issue with playing with the aerospace beyond the maps, the maps are a big, big part of it. Um, aerospace assets hit way above their battle value, like tremendously above their battle value um, to such a degree that if you're not playing a scenario that accounts for air superiority just i mean being superiority or like you've got a dedicated anti-air platform like a like a rifleman with flak rounds or a jaeger mech with flak rounds with a targeting computer um basically he who has the air assets just wins more or less and i guess it's not too far off of um conventional warfare right like if a bunch of mechs were stomping towards an objective how would we handle it we'd, you know we'd, we'd take it out with air superiority or like infantry with with uh, what's that um, anti-tank weapon called the javelin so give them a house rules nerf I think properly nerfing stuff would require a, a pretty deep understanding of it to do it do it well without nerfing them too far to convince people not to take them. I think the best way to play with them, again, is to just know that they're good and factor that into your scenario. Um... The I had a really fun idea for like a a, a multi mission track 
where you play one scenario where you're uh, attacker defender and the attacker uh, has to um, has a certain number of turns to destroy aerospace assets on a on an airfield before the pilots get into them and start them up and whatnot and then you track those number of turns and the you keep track of those and then the uh, the second mission on the track you've got the attacker defender rolls reversed and the defender uh, will be facing aerospace assets after a certain the same number of turns um, based on how many uh, how many aerospace assets were able to take off and I think that that could be really fun scenarios make this stuff more interesting it's like it's not They're not a tool for fun casual games. Or they're not a tool for casual games. They're they're a tool for for you know larger scale conflict stuff. And that's something I'd really like to explore in the new year with the um with the whole campaign system idea. Country fried minis battletech campaign. Emery says the size print is really good for ringers. For ringers, proxies for Legions, Imperialis, Adeptus Satanicus games. Yeah, I think so too. Um, it's, it's actually it's kind of kind of neat to have a 15 mil model like this in that like it's big enough to be a a nice display piece, but not. Um, really demanding of your of your desk or shelf space like the Hunchback for instance which is it's up there on the shelf right next to me and it's just it's huge I don't really have anywhere to to store it proper so it's just on the top of a shelf hanging out gathering <laughs> dust them sirens coming through for y'all <laughs> All right, so we got almost made it all the way around all the vents and uh, handles and whatnot. Got some vents on the front I want to fill in. And I think I think I do want to do some heat effect on these vents here on the front and then we've got these two narrow ones in the back here i want to do a heat effect a simple heat effect again i want to keep this mech you know accessible relatable um oh there we go got another another vent here We've actually got some on the back of the guns I need to hit as well. But we're almost done with the metallics and we can move on to the next step. We're less than two hours in. I think it's making pretty good time, especially considering that there was no paint on this mech whatsoever at the start. The Hunchback is basically a diorama. Yeah, it really is. It's, um... What a... It's a 12-inch base officially. The the hex on the if you measure it point to point is 14 inches. It looks like the um looks like the camera's doing all right this time. I I may have finally found a decent position for it. Um, it is a weird weird deal with certain certain colors of models that just don't it don't play well with man what the hell is going on that's like six sirens at this point <laughs> I 
I would say they're probably out there harassing some homeless person, but I don't think I don't think SFPD responds to to uh, issues with homeless folks anymore. I think there's like a there's a whole homeless outreach team in San Francisco. And yeah, for any of y'all who don't know and have heard rumors of how bad the homeless problem is in San Francisco, it is as bad as you've heard. We don't we don't have good great systems set up to take care of um, and help homeless individuals, and the wealth divide is really, really, really pronounced in this city. Got a bubble here. See if we can't lift that out. There it goes. Okay. I think that was the last vent, and these are the last grip handles. I hope that's in frame. I'm trying to keep it in frame. Nightbot says, Chicken Run is the highest grossing stop motion animated film, even beating The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's... I... I don't know if I believe these factoids that Nightbot's given us. I don't trust it. I think it's lying. I think it's just a database of crap that someone entered and is like, yeah, that sounds fine. Or maybe that's the point. That they're, they're facts that just sound slightly incredulous. Nathan says, you could give the HB to a romantic interest in lieu of flowers. Storage space problem solved. I very nearly um, submitted it as my gallery submission for the for the class show. Uh, but I, I felt that that was a little, I don't know just didn't feel right for that I mean I have spent an entire semester like building the case for for hobby work um, being art in its own right but it, I don't know it just it didn't seem right for the for the setting so I did that tattoo project instead um, which was fun came out all right that material is actually kind of a nightmare to line. But yeah, it came out all right. I'm satisfied with it. All right. Uh, you know, we've got a ton of gray on here. I mean, a ton of silver already. I kind of think that these round things on the back underneath torso should probably go probably go this color as well it looks like something that would be bare metal the end of some kind of massive hydraulic system or something so we're going to do those we're going to do these by these, I mean those. Because these and those is one and the same. Alright. Okay, day. Okay, day. What else? Alright. I could have rinsed that brush first. Somebody put their laundry in that show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I sent that image over to you. Did, uh, one of our students did a um, did a laundry sculpture, like in the center of the room. It's like it's a chicken wire frame built up uh, with all blue outfits on top of it. It looks kind of neat when it's freestanding like that. But there's there's a big variety of, of art styles in that class. We got some photography, we got some prints. We've got one student did a like um 
it's like a hand-drawn background and then he did an animation of a character uh, being played through a projector on top of a um, on top of the background it, it's wild none of the pieces have anything to do with each other but like all together it, it somehow it works okay so from here I think hmm I think these whole sections right here actually should be metallic there's like some lenses and stuff for targeting systems or whatever uh, in housings and I think those housings should be silver as well so not quite as done as I had thought with the metallic so let's fill that in and just bring this metallic all the way over yeah that looks a lot better because we'll hit it with, with a little bit of lens jeweling here in a moment almost an hour and 50 in it's coming along uh, this itself is another last minute project I believe I believe this uh, the deadline for this is like midday tomorrow I'm not sure what time zone Locust Labs is in uh, it's, it's like the sleeve of flash concept where eventually disparity comes to theme yeah exactly I have this whole thing on my legs um, that it's like designs from friends and family and it's all like they're all a lot of them are really bad they don't have anything to do with each other but together they've become this piece of art <laughs> hold <laughs> Pluto lost its status as a planet was later refused status as a Greek god and was and just last week was rejected as Miss Mickey Mouse's dog, according to a statement by ABC Walt Disney Corp. Factoid. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. Are you trolling? Are you trolling us, Emery? Okay, so I do want to do some like heat and glowing stuff. So we'll get to that in a moment, but I think the next step here is going to be to um, I want to do some some ink washing, I think. Actually, no. I want to do one more spot of metallic. These big round sections that make the knees. I, I like to do those in, in silver, so we're going to do that. And kind of break up the monotony of the gray on the legs. That seems like a plausibly silver portion to me. So real quick we'll do that, and then we'll jump over to the null oil. And I think what I'm going to do for the null oil is to thin it down more than normal and then I'm going to put a drop of alcohol in it to break the surface tension even more and see if we can't get it to flow a little closer to like an oil wash type performance or like a panel liner because I don't want to flood the surface with the oil with the ink to get it into every nook and cranny and if we can get a little of that action where it just flows on its own That'd be really awesome. Well, wow. is that white balance like shifting back and forth between warm and cold? Is that what I'm seeing there? All right, and I'm gonna thread the needle. Hmm. Actually, I think this cylinder dealio is also gonna go silver. Like, the, there's like a double cylinder assemblage that makes up the knee mechanics 
And I think silver's good for those. Silver will be really good for those. Like, I mean, in actuality, it probably would all be painted. But, I don't know. Just a little extra visual interest there. A little bit of that shine, I think, goes a long way. Even if it don't necessarily make sense. Let's get that a go in. Audio still holding up all right. That sound, that song, looks like it might be a little loud on my readout here, but I'm not actually listening to a playback of it right now. Yeah, let's get this to silver. Yeah, the white is jumping, but it's almost cool. Yeah, it's nuts, right? That this Ideally, I need a good, like, proper camera set up here doing the same role. Uh, but you know, a good DSLR and some lenses, or, or at least a good one with with servo assisted autofocus. It, it, God, it's so fucking expensive. I'm going to eventually upgrade to a Canon. Um, what is it? A M50. Canon M50 Mark II is the one I'm aiming for. And that camera is like, I think I could get one for about 500 bucks. It's just, boy, that's, that's, a, that's a chunk of change, you know? All right. Um, what else? While I have this out, maybe we'll do this like targeting and tracking thing down here in silver too it's another one of those parts that would probably be painted the same color as the mech but you know this is a model so we'll create a little visual interest there just hit that with a little bit of silver all right cool 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 looking good all right so from here I think we're, we're ready to just jump right into um, right into some shading. So let's grab our gnome oil. I got a whole nother container of it. Okay, good. All right. So we're going to make a puddle of our gnome oil. It's an arbitrary amount. Here we go. And then I'm going to put a couple drops of water in it. And maybe four will do. And then I'm going to take and put a single drop of 99% isopropyl alcohol in it. And that's just going to do some wacky stuff to the surface tension. And this model's big enough that we're still gonna just keep using the same brush, this number two round. We should have some, have some really high flow stuff here. Flow aid would probably work a little better than the alcohol, but I don't have any. So, um, yeah, now we're gonna take our oil, our ink wash and start um, basically black line and stuff. Just gonna real quick like I may need to put a little more alcohol in it. Get that surface tension down even further. No, okay, that's working. That's working. Just gonna give our brush a dip. 
and try to just really carefully run that brush edge. Um, I probably shouldn't lick that with isopropyl in it. That tasted awful. Don't lick your brushes, y'all. <laughs> Don't be licking your brushes. Especially when you get isopropyl alcohol in your paint. It's not quite got that same flow as an oil. Um, but, I don't know, maybe, maybe I do need to put another drop of the ISO in it. I'd rather it... I want it to, to glide over the surface. Pretty sure there's a trick to it. Where you, like, could wet the surface of the model first before you do this. I'm going to put two drops more of the alcohol in there. The idea here is to avoid as much of the extra cleanup stuff as I can. I'm just going to go around all these panels, all these raised areas, and run our brush as close to it and as clean as we can. And take a little extra time to do this. Um, so they don't, we don't need to do any cleanup afterwards. Yeah, okay. Three drops seems about right. It'll still, still um, spill over if we're not super careful in the application, but I think that the extra properties given over the, the surface tension change from the ISO will help a lot in the application of these black lines. We just want these panels to pop. Give them a little 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 extra zhuzh, you know. Make them stand out a little more. I also think that now that I'm doing this, I think that because this is a primer and not a paint, that it'll also affect the properties a little bit on how the, the ink wash is gonna form. This song is a cure riff, but done by Peter Schilling style. I, I don't I don't get that reference, unfortunately. Let's see. I'll give it a listen. Which track is this? Oh, it just stopped, didn't it? It did just stop. Uh, I, I don't know which... I don't know on a song-by-song song basis, but this, most of the tracks are by... Um, shit, I got my headphones off. I don't know if you have to hear me. Most of the tracks are by... Um, Lupus Nocti, Rishko, and Wave Saver. I should maybe put a list of them in the description of my streams going forward, just in case folks are interested. Uh, the music that I use is provided by Epidemic Sound, and it's definitely out there. You can use it for your own projects, but... If you don't pay for the license, you'll get a you'll get a copyright thing on your video. And I, I don't think they take your video down. Uh, heck, I don't even think they necessarily um, demonetize you, but it will like put a put a link automatically put a link in to the epidemic sound stuff. Anyhow, back to the task at hand. We're just hitting, 
hidden panels. Um, this would be a whole hell of a lot easier if this was a proper panel liner or even if I had made up an oil wash. But I want to make this this uh, paint up accessible. Turn in a um, turn in a live stream paint job into a, a shit, almost like a instruction. And again, we just want to we want to keep this wash in the crevices as much as we can manage I'm trying to avoid staining the surface um, because it's airbrushed on it'd be it'd be hard to go back in and match the colors so just take your time and breathe and pull your lines Get you a nice brush that's easy to work with. Don't have to be tiny. In fact, if anything, a tiny brush is probably bad for this. You want a sharp brush. Heck, this one ain't even that sharp. And then on these metal parts, we are just going to saturate it. Just run it right over it. We do want the surface staining there. So we'll hit those real good. This angle. I wonder if I'd used mineral spirits here instead of alcohol, if it performed like the like the oil wash would. I bet it would. But again, I want to keep this accessible. Quick, quick moves. Quick work. Although this model does have a lot of panel lines. Shit, this would have been a good candidate to try out the... Uh, who makes the, the panel liner with the brush? Tamiya? Be a good one for it. I haven't tried it out, but I've seen a lot of people use it. And it does look like it works like magic. Soldier forward. I wouldn't quite call it tedium. It is a little tedious. Maybe it is tedium. Monotonous? Is that what I'm looking for in the term here? I think it is. I think it's tedious. I think it's the term I'm after. But sometimes, I make the case that tedious, tedium, is good for ya. Just dig in and get it done. When you know what needs be done, and the only way to get it done is to do it, Sometimes those projects are great. All right. I think that's just about a leg done. I'm going to go back around the foot here. All right. That's a leg done. Let's start working into the hip here. 
these inner areas where it's like deeper in the shadow, we can be a little sloppier with the application. Not that I'm saying to be sloppy, but anywhere that it's a dark shadow, we don't have to um, worry quite as much about the, the precision application of the brush. It's fine. Again, this whole project is good enough is good enough. And that's where we live. Ooh, we got votes on the unseen chassis. We got big votes for the Warhammer. People like the Marauder and the Longbow as well. No love for the Rifleman, which is fair. It's a little, it's a little doofy. I'm not gonna lie, it is a little doofy. That said, I do have a 3D printed um, set of the Unseen, those classic four that I've been meaning to paint up at some point. Or no, I guess it's not those four. It's a, it's a Warhammer, a Rifleman, a Marauder, and a Battlemaster. Uh, and I'm intent to paint them up in Crescent Hawks, but you know, I, I got a million and one projects. Shit, I got this Lance, the, these boys with the, the brown camo, and then I've got two Lances sitting over there. I've got my next 10K uh, Lance for a video up here next Ironwind Metals project which I'll hopefully turn into another another bit for Ares maybe get another um, maybe get another code from them hopefully fingers crossed I haven't I haven't reached back out to Mr. King about it. I think it'd be fun. Okay. Working our way through all the pelvis panels. If you had panels on your pelvis. All right, that's the front. I'm actually gonna hit um, these like ball joint connectors here. Just gonna brush over those real heavy with the null oil and make them a darker gray. All right, so I think we still have a little bit to go here on the back end. On the back end of this pelvis, of these pelvis panels. Again, trying to be pretty careful about our application. Um, you know, it's we're not going to be taking the time to go back in and clean up any overspill, so. Uh, you know, let's keep it, keep it nice and tight. Main frame, yeah, yep, yep, yep. A little bit here and there and everywhere. And then again, we got that ball joint going on. Let's fucking saturate that boy. Uh, same with the handles here. They're made of metal. They're getting saturated. Shit, even this... Even this, like, cylinder thing from earlier. Let's go back and just saturate that down. 
I still think that metallic paint with just a heavy wash of null oil over top of it looks great. It really is a magic product. The new formulation isn't quite as good as the old, but it works. It still does the job. The color's a little different. It's almost got like a, like a white gray type film to it. Which it didn't have before. It was more like a warm brownishness to it, which I preferred. Okay, so we've got the leg, we've got the pelvis. We're going to work back down this other leg now. Same process, just giving a dip, making sure our brush is sharp, but also saturated enough to pull some long runs of the Nolm oil mixture. And again, even though the surface tension is reduced by the alcohol, we still want to try to control the tip as much as possible. We're creating these artificial shadows, we don't want to do a lot of surface staining. And honestly, it's all very subtle anyways. So... Make of that what you will. If you're doing it yourself. You know, you could be a little a little more what's the term? Lackadaisical? Haphazard. I just wanna Give these areas a little extra definition. A little bit here and there. And then again, the metal, anything that's metal, it's just getting straight up brushed on. A nice heavy wash of the stuff. Full strength, full coverage. It'll find its place and it'll work its magic. I guess it, it's a little diminished because it's really thinned down, right? So it's, what do we do? Like five drops of water or something? Three drops of water? And then three drops of alcohol? It's definitely not full strength gnome oil. Log fisted. <laughs> back around back around to the to the vegan version of ham fisted Let's see Emery says defenders a rifleman phalanx longbow tomahawk is a warhammer Spartan is the archer VF 1s is the wasp and the Valkyrie VF 1a for the stinger VF 1s SAP for the Phoenix Hawk. VF-1A Armored Batroid is Crusader, and the Glaug is the Marauder. Uh, I don't know enough about it, but those all sound very correct. I mean, I don't know enough about Macross. Let me, let me clarify. I know about those designs, but I know those designs from Battletech that's where I first seen them. First seen them in the technical readout 3050 when I was about five years old. My dad did uh, painting commissions when I was a, a little lad for a local gaming store in my hometown called Centaur Comics. And I actually had a couple of his his uh, Plastec models for years and years and years. But um, over COVID, 
I was staying with my folks for a while and uh, I gave my dad a care package to get into Battletech. Let me see. It was, um, it was, shit, what mechs were in it? I can't remember exactly which ones. There were a few mechs and then he was always fond of the hunchback. So I got two different hunchback models. I got the, um, the Iron Wind models HBK 4G and the there's one that's like an experimental hunchback that has like um I want to say it's an ultra auto cannon it's like a HBK 7 HBX 7 I, I can't remember uh but in that care package of mechs and paints and stuff um I tossed in his old his old uh, plastic models that he painted all them years ago that I've been holding on to. Thought that was kind of cool. I sat at the uh, dinner table one night and watched my dad paint this um, like a, a desert camo pattern on something. God, I can't remember what chassis it was. But he did the whole thing with a toothpick and I thought that was really creative. So I picked him up a whole bunch of mix. Wonder if he ever painted them. I don't know. Emery it says Ossol Security Remote Strider Locust Dugram Shadowhawk Round Facer Griffin Blockhead Wolverine Bigfoot Battlemaster Ironfoot. So those are all um those are all uh, Dugram Fang in the Sun, except for the Locust. Locust was from Crusher Joe, uh, which I recently went and watched because I wanted to see where they pulled the Locust from. And it's in a, like a single scene. It's in the movie for like 30 seconds. And I found that supremely disappointing. But it was a good watch. I enjoyed that movie. It was very... Slapstick. Very Bugs Bunny. And, and it was fun. It was a fun ride. Big recommend Crusher Joe if you ain't seen it give it a watch I don't know if it's a show or a manga I know that it was a movie and that's what I watched um, oh I never put the normal on that vent let's fix that real quick like and this handle also there we go Working our way around. We're almost done with the second leg. And then I think the next step after this will be to do the chipping first. Because after the chipping, I want to do some glowing heat effects. And then uh, the cockpit jeweling. And we'll see how much we can get done. I may just extend this stream out until we're done um, so let me pick up the pace here work a little faster um, yeah because I realize I'm losing time now we're at 2 hours 22 minutes and we're still panel lining but I guess that makes sense because it's the tedious stuff <laughs> wait hold on <laughs> Emery says, toothpicks were the go-to for black panel lining before those markers came out. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, Box Fox Scoot says, you're a second leg. <laughs> Very fun. Uh, welcome, Box Fox. Good to see you again. Ross Roscoe, hello. Late to the stream. Is that a resin print or PLA? This is a resin this time. 
Um, the layer lines are, are visible, but I, I went with a 0 0.05 millimeter. Uh, it's hollowed out to shit. Um, I want to say the walls are 2.5 millimeters thick. So it's, it's pretty sturdy, but it's hollow. I let it drain for about, uh, two hours before I did the final cure, but this was printed on my, um, on the frozen Sonic mini. And then the base is a resized scale up in uh, PLA, which I did on my Anycubic Cobra Go. Um, Emery says it's a movie and a follow-up OVA and dirty pair was spun off from it. Okay. Good to know. So there's more, there's more crusher Joe to check into. Um, Ross says, I have a friend looking to print some Battletech. Would you rate these Locust Lab, STL, and PLA? All right. I'm probably a little biased um, when it comes to the Locust Lab's prints, but I've printed out a few, and they print out really well. Um, they're, if you're doing them in PLA, they're going to, you know, you're going to deal with regular PLA issues, but the... Locust Labs models uh, have like old school clean lines uh, on the designs and they, they print out really well. Um, as per the Hunchback, this was all done in PLA and it printed out great. So um, I would say if you print them in small scale PLA, you might run into issues, but I was able to get... I was able to get my Cobra Go to print in 0.05 millimeter layer lines. So you, you could do it. I would recommend SLA over PLA for sure. Um, but yeah, the, the designs are really blocky and um, the surface detailing isn't too too fine of a scale so so it should print really really nice first mecha anything i was exposed to was the awful live action robot wars movie from the 80s robot jocks by right yeah i know robot jocks that was you know i i think robot jocks is worth going back and watching with an open mind now I think it's I think it's worth revisiting bad movies uh with I don't know how do I put this I find that as I get older I'm able to reconnect with um I'm able to reconnect with the the concept of childlike wonder while also uh eschewing edgy teenager uh uh, criticality. Shit, we might do a... That, that'd be a good, um... What do you call it? Like a watch party thing in the Discord. Robot jocks. D do it over the... Do it for New Year's or something. Or in that season, I should say. I don't know what I'll be doing for New Year's. But I've had fun with the. Um, I'm a I'm a Discord member over at Dan does is Dan does has a Discord, and I'm a member over there. And he does a uh, just like a movie night thing, and I caught one of them the other day. It was a lot of fun watching. Fuck, I can't remember the name of that film. It was like a shitty. B sci-fi film. It was, it was a really good time. Bad movie. Real bad movie. But a really good time watching it with folks. Like-minded individuals. So yeah, those of you who don't know, uh, make sure you check out the um, Discord if you're not a member. There's a link in the uh, description down below. Come on over and, and share your thoughts on 
silly subjects and your, your hobby stuff you're working on. We'd love to see it. We'd love to chat with you. If you can't find it in the description down below, check out our website at countryfriedminis.com. You'll be able to find a link over there, as well as the stream calendar, so you can stay appraised of when new stuff is happening. Also, a great time to uh, mention that uh, you can join up as a channel member for as little as a dollar a month. If you'd like to support the channel directly and help um, pay for supplies, and paints, and a new webcam, consider joining up as a channel member for as little as a dollar a month. You'll have access to some fabulous biscuit based emojis um, uh, ad free videos when when is appropriate and much much more well I say much much more but really you're just helping out the efforts here alright so that's both legs done we're going to move on to the torso uh, just same deal as before with the pelvis we're going to not worry as much about being super super precise on the lower areas anywhere there's going to be more shadows that's we can be a little more um log fisted in our application because we want more shadows down there anyways but um as we approach the top we want to really dial in our application and again just you know get your get your nice sharp brush and uh hit the edges here also charge fist welcome you have a wrestling match in face yeah that's uh um, robot jogs silly silly um thing box fox cute says i can't really remember the first mecha i got introduced to but the first one i actively sought out and watched was dugram Doogaroom. <laughs> Let's chant it out dramatically. Yeah. Uh, Emery, a child cannot understand that Star Crash is garbage or a message from space is another movie dressed up like Star Wars at the last minute. Yeah, exactly. Also, Nightbot says Ewok jerky was a popular snack across the Outer Rim in the Star Wars universe. I, again, I don't think I, I don't believe anything Nightbot has said. We never approve your independence from our federation. Uh, should should I know this reference? I don't know. Sometimes sometimes I'm out of the loop with your references, Emery. It, it's either <laughs> age or or uh, exposure. Not really sure. Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention enough. Shit, was it you that turned me on to the, uh... What's it? Exabungle? I don't know how you'd even say it. I, I ended up buying that model. The, the Caprico style. Caprico type kit. I'll eventually assemble that thing. I think it'll make for some fun content. That's what I say about every uh, every model I pick up these days, though. It's a curse, I tell you. All right. So still, we're working with a fairly sizable brush it's a two round so it's got a nice fat bottom and a fairly sharp tip so we can get some decent precision application uh, but also hold enough to to go all the way around I'm gonna skip lining these elements here because I'm gonna do some glow effect on those here in a moment um, after we do this lining no after we'll do the 
We'll do the um, sponge chipping first. Actually, I say that, but we need to do the the freehanding first before we can get onto the sponge chipping. Because I need some sponge chipping to go over top of the freehanding. But we're getting quite close to that point. All right. Just about got the back done here. And we're still on these like underside areas. So again, can be a little more ham fisted in, in the application of the null oil there because it's, it's shadowed area anyways. And then we still have these ball joints going on. So the connection here will just get slobbed on. I do want the staining on those connection points. All right, and then we've got some silver. So anywhere that's silver, we're just going to hit it real thick with the null oil right over top. I'm not even going to bother highlighting it. I mean, I, I could, I might, but I'm probably not going to. I want to make, I want to get this mech done in a single sitting and also keep it accessible. I want the lowest skilled painters out there to be able to do this paint style, which I'm developing right now on stream with y'all. This will be part of a, a bigger project with a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of mechs. I don't know if you call it. Um, I don't think it's a full company, but it's. Um, I want to say it's three lances, all in 15 millimeter scale. Um, basically, a whole bunch of intro tech mechs and a few tanks. Might be a company. I don't actually know offhand what constitutes a company in the inner sphere. Uh, but yeah. Fun stuff. Honestly, when working on tedium like this, I find that it's good to um, force a little enthusiasm about it. It's back to that whole, like, be happy while you're painting idea. If you do that, then, like, if you can keep your eyes on the prize, on the, like, the joy of finishing the project, it, it really helps to get through. Um, monotonous, repetitive tasks, like, like lining panels. All right. And again, as we get closer to the top, these really light areas, just want to be a little more careful about our brushwork. Gentle touch, nice loaded brush, but a sharp tip. I think that's just about got the back done. I'm going to hit this thing again. And that's the back. So let's start on these gun arms. And we'll start underneath where we'll hit it with the same approach of like, you can be a little heavier down here because we want the shadows anyways. Like, who cares if you go a little outside the lines there? That's fine. The company is three platoons. He is three platoons. So what's uh set does platoon carry over to, to Lance's in Battletech? I, I feel like this is something I should know and I just don't.
thinking of Battalion in Intersphere Organization. Can't remember. If it were um, if it were Comstar, it's half of a level three. I think. Damn, I, I gotta admit my ignorance here. I, I'm not 100% sure um, how the organization falls. But it would be three lances a mech. So it's 12 mechs, like. I can't remember, like four or five tanks. A few platoons of infantry. But they're all going to be done in a nice, simple paint job. Um, Great Eth Legion. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm pretty sure it's all Locust Labs um, sculpts as well. With the, the Atlas, which just got released for December. So, patrons of Locust Labs at the scientist tier have access to those um, if you're if you print a lot of mechs um, I do recommend uh, joining up over at Locust Labs Patreon it's, I'm going to say it's 8 bucks a month for the scientist tier and there's been dependable monthly uh, multi-part, multi-pose kits. Uh, but if you're not into a monthly support and just want to get a design or two, I think most of them are available over at Cults 3D. So they're still accessible to folks who aren't um, shelling out money every month. But I believe in the work. They're really good sculpts, so it's an expense. Yeah, three to five. Platoon is what? Three to five squads. Company three platoon. Platoon is three to five squads. A battalion is a whole division of an army. Base, army base. So your three lances would be a platoon. Okay. Um, but that's like... That's traditional hierarchy, right? Not Not necessarily like the in-universe classifications. Because you say platoon, and I'm thinking a platoon of infantry, which is... Shit, how many squads are in it? I'm pretty sure a platoon in... Battletech is in in the inner sphere. I think a squad is six guys, and it's four squads of six to make up a platoon of twenty-four men. Um, some of the other infantry types have less, like the the jump infantry, I believe, is generally 18 men, so three squads of six. So there's definitely some departure from, like, uh, standardized norms of our reality in Intersphere um, doctrine. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus, you can write it off as a business expense. Oh my god, I ne <laughs> it never even crossed my mind, Box Fox, to be honest. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I could write that off as a business expense. 84 troops, 3 platoons, 84 troops. Nightbot again says, A wildlife technician, Richard Thomas, took the famous tongue twister 
How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? And can calculated a rough ex estimate of what the answer would. But it doesn't... It... Now this one, it's not only do I not believe this, but Nightbot actually didn't give us any fact there. You're failing, Nightbot. Uh, yeah, also, Nightbot's reminding you that I do do commission painting. So check out the gigs over at Fiverr if you want to get your own platoon, or platoon, if you want to get your own Lance of Mechs painted up. Uh, if you put in your orders now, you can get them in before the holiday. Uh, I have left my prices really low right now in case folks want to take advantage and get some mechs on the cheap cheap for their friends or family or co-workers or themselves for the holiday january 1st we're gonna prices are going up um to you know balance out how much work actually goes into them but right now you can get you a lance of uh printed painted shipped four mechs of your choice for 75 bucks or for a hundo I'll pick up a catalyst box of your choice and paint them. Uh, that is a um, catalyst box of four. Uh, $10 extra for the extra mech. But yeah, if you if you like some mechs right now, for less than 100 bucks, you can get a Lance. Printed, painted, shipped. Prices are going up in the new year. I also can do, um, you know, custom one-offs, like, you know, stuff like this. So if you want something like that done, don't hesitate to hit me up. I can also turn your content or your your commission into content if that's something you would like. Check it out over at Fiverr.com. If you don't want to take down the link, check out CountryFriedMinis.com. And there's a link there on the uh, navigation panel. Anyhow, back to it. Where are we sitting at? Two hours and 45 minutes. Good Lord, this is taking forever to pan a line, but we're getting through it. We're almost done with it. And then I think the next step up is gonna be to freehand a Grey Death Legion um, symbol. On one of these shoulder, what would you call that? panels, one of these shoulder panels. I think we'll push it tonight. I don't want to end this so half finished. Heck, I, I bet you, I bet you given another two hours I could finish this match. I'm gonna try. Try to push it on this late night Saturday stream here in the bullshit corner. Alright. Actually, I think I need to reduce the surface tension a little more. If it's an Irby, it's worth negative. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, Three Lance is a company in Battletech, but a reinforced company might have a detailed specialist Lance added like recon or war crimes. Okay, Lance is four units, but basically an armor unit or section. It says companies Three Lances can have a few extra units. Okay, yeah, Charles Fist. That's what I thought. Um, so it is indeed a company that I'll be working on at this scale. Uh... Another Nate says, unfortunately, that would require itemized deduction. The standard is almost always higher. I had 60 plus K expenses trucking one year and still didn't get any benefit from all that receipt tracking. Oh, that's that hurts my heart. That hurts my heart to hear. You know, and it's funny, too, because like, you, you know, the government could just tell you what you owe in taxes and not have to let you figure it out that way. All right, we're going to put a few more drops of alcohol in this null oil and break that surface tension down even more. Um, 
<laughs> Van Sant Militia War Crimes Division 12. Yes. Yes, that that actually sounds really fun. You just give them like generic camo and do a little um I guess what you'd paint a dragon on it. Right? Van Zant is the guy from um Reign of Fire. Uh <laughs> Emery says a battalion is two to five companies. Three is a typical battalion. Okay, yeah. So there's some variation in it as well. Uh, Charge Fist is a company of stingers with Savannah Masters on the side. God, that's that's disgusting. That's so mean. That's so mean. Uh, it's, it's it's good. And you know, it's funny because like... I know it's a meme. And I know you would piss off people bringing it. But... Uh, the, the swarm works. That's why Karita did it. Okay. That is... This arm... This arm is lined. And now... Let's do this other arm and then we'll work around over the top into the cockpit. So we are doing the same deal over here. I realize I just left out a little bit back here. There we go. Okay, so same as before, I'm just going to be real careful about our application, try and be real sharp with the tip of our brush, get that ink down, and black line all our panels. Uh, in retrospect, I probably should have done this first and then did the the dry brush um, because it's demanding a little more precision right here but it's fine you know good enough is good enough I ain't trying to destroy myself working on stuff battalion is around 36 mechs could go as low as 24 as high as 60 uh, yeah I mean at that point it that's even a big um, alpha strike game like those displays that the uh, that you see in the over on camo specs and um, in the rule books and whatnot big dioramas okay just realized I wasn't in frame there my apologies I hope I haven't been painting off frame this whole time. It's easy to forget that I'm trying to stream this. You just get in the zone and you're slapping the paint down. Auto zone, that is. Stupid. All right. Again, anywhere we got the metallics, we're just going to hit it full strength. Slap it a null oil over top, have it sink down in the crevices, and stain the surface. We've already done the back. So, let's pop these panels, get it looking all right. Uh, 
I think this mech is going to be quite heavily weathered to kind of balance out the simplicity of this gray paint job. Another Nate says, you kept me up too late last night, then I got up too early, so I'm going to call it early day. Well, thanks for stopping by, Another Nate. Always good chatting with you. No pressure to, to, to hang out beyond comfortability. Catch you on a future one. Uh, war crimes and battle tech usually means fire and machine guns, aka town burners and troop choppers. Indeed. Battle tech calls an armor platoon a lance. So, like, what? 12 tanks? Is a lance? Just about checks out because like you take a whole bunch of really light tanks for really cheap I'm personally a fan of stuff like Hetzers um, in theory I like the the big big tanks for like 80 hundred tonners but um, I can't say I've ever actually run them on the tabletop. I kind of want to run a... Um, oh, what's the... What's the real big one? Demolisher 2? The one with the double AC-20s? Though I did just see um, that Wargamer Fritz posted a piece talking about... Um, that the big the super big tanks aren't are not worth it and generally i think wargamer fritz has some good opinions on on tabletop functionality when it comes to battle tech for the most part we agree on a few things namely that big guns never tire even though objectively Objectively, the Hunchback with all the, the medium lasers is better than the 4G. I I like I like the big guns. So you know, big guns never tire. Also, welcome, call me Grishka. Um, we are working on it is a big rifle boy. We are working on a 15 millimeter scale Grey Death Legion rifleman. It's kind of the prototype for a um, a project coming up in the new year that is a what do we land on? It's a platoon it's 12 mechs and some tanks and stuff or a battalion I've already forgotten 24 tanks is a company you don't want 12 mechs or tank is a company company, okay uh, Nightbot is. I, I need to reduce the the rate at which Nightbot is spamming these these um, factoids. But here we go. The most expensive virtual object is Club Never Die in Entropia Universe, which is worth six hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. It was originally bought at ten. Th Again, that's that's like the fifth or sixth thing Nightbot has said that I just don't believe. This robot is lying to us. Tommy Grishka says, I feel like the 2C2 Hunchback had four fuck-off giant lasers is the best. I'm not familiar with that one. Hold on, I, everything is on hold for a second because I need to do some research. Hunchback, Sarna. 2C2? 2C2. Hold on, what is, what? This can't be a thing. 2C2. Oh wait, the wait, you're talking about Hunchback 2, the 2C. Yeah, okay. Which is not a hunchback. That's a hunchback 2C. That's that's filthy clan tech. Filthy clan tech. But number two. 
Like their inner sphere counterparts, Hunchback 2Cs mounted smaller weapons are frequently called a Swayback 2Cs. The Hunchback 2C2, a Crusader variant, utilizes four heavy large lasers that can quickly cause a heat-induced shutdown when fired without thought. As secondary weapons, the variant in includes two medium pulse lasers. The 19 double heat sinks cannot handle the heat buildup for long. It's 1500 BV? No, yeah. BV 2.0. 1800 how much heat on a heavy large laser that's insanity holy moly so you're what 34 heat over if you shoot them all four at once it's like why even have them charles fist said Hundred ton tanks are just like annihilator, too slow to get in the fight unless they have a good amount of long range. But yeah, I I agree. I absolutely agree, and it it's like you you could use them in a situation where you're forcing the opponent into some kind of attrition where they're going to run into them, or like you know ambush units. If you're playing with hidden deployment, I could see where that works. Yeah, it's great. It's for honor duels honor duels oh man I don't know I just I, I tend to be a real stick in the mud about clan tech I, I my initial exposure to to battle tech was again my reading my dad's um, TRO 3050 uh, when I was a kid, so it it greatly influenced my thoughts about the clans. You know, my first exposure was was reading about them as these invaders that were coming in to upset everyone's way of life, and, you know, take their homes away and um, kill your warriors and force you to live in their um, caste based society. So, yeah, I'm a little, um, I'm a little anti-clan, just through and through. I'm a spheroid. Like, I refuse to use the clan names for their mechs. I love my Annihilator spent three turns getting up on the top of a level three hill, then it rained Gauss rifles and ER PPCs on my idiot friends. Hilarious. Um... Clans are objectively evil. They suck, and I start out hating them. Yeah, it's... Uh, I resent their very existence. Because, um, you know, they're OP just because they're OP for story purposes. And they're OP to such a degree that they had to balance the game by making everyone clans. Uh... <laughs> uh in fact, at our last uh, Battletech Day meetup... I um I energetically made that claim and I was told to be quiet and and not to say the quiet part out loud. <laughs> also Nightbot is spamming again. Daniel Craig was an anonymous stormtrooper in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Originally he denied his cameo and claimed he wouldn't bother being an extra in a movie. I I don't believe anything Nightbot has said. Also, I will reduce the rate at which Nightbot spams this. I realize it has been going a little hard on the factoids. Um, it's kind of hard to dial in the, uh, the old timer function on Nightbot. you got to find a balance between how often the interval is and then like... There's also a trigger based on the chat rate. So it like, if it's really quiet in here and folks aren't chatting, it, it shouldn't, um, it shouldn't be dropping anything. But I think folks have showed up tonight. So it's been triggered and thrown a lot of spam. Oh my God. It, it hit three all at the same time. Uh, it's kind of the point. Look up intersphere mentally structure on Sarna. Yeah, it, it, it is that easy, Emery. I'm just... I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I can't be bothered. 
I will at some point. Uh, I definitely will need to look into it as this project goes forward. I need to know it pretty well. But like, this like work, man. Okay. We are coming up on being done with the panel lining at least. And that's exciting. Because right after that, we're going to jump into some freehand. And I'm actually kind of excited to do a little freehand live. Even though this, this stream's running a little later than usual. Um, I want to get this mech done. I think there's another, like... I want to say another 14 hours or something before it needs to be submitted. So it is crunch time. be fine. We're going to do a little freehand, a little bit of a um, little bit of glowing effect, a little bit of cockpit jeweling, and that's it. Real simple paint job on this one. <laughs> yeah, Nightbot, more like spam. Yeah, it is insane, right? Like, I don't... It, it looks like the, the timer for uh for the Patreon and the commission painting and the, the threadless and the Discord all hit at the same time. I'll, I'll I'll get it dialed in. I promise. I was all excited at the start of the stream because I got the I got the timers working and now I'm realizing it's kinda like um it, it's going a little hard. But that's fine. I I'm off frame again sorry y'all I can't if I bring this down some yeah get it closer to the edge of the table like that and then I can tilt the camera up when I need like that there we go I tend to drift closer to myself Industry mechs and armor will statistically beat out the same amount over engineered clan nonsense. And that's thematic. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, you know, as much as I lament the OP clan BS, uh, I actually tried running a clan star, like fully decked out with five mechs and then uh, elementals and all that jazz, and just BV versus BV went against some 3060, 3063 era Inner Sphere mechs. I had, uh, I was playing against the, the AI and Mega Mech and they completely kicked the shit out of me. It was, um, kind of funny actually to see that the, the post clan invasion mechs made to kill clanners, kill clanners. So I no longer fear a silly clan warrior. I've got the power of freedom. <laughs> uh, and Gauss rifles. And speaking of Gauss rifles, I saw in the Discord today that one of the upcoming kits one of the upcoming Catalyst release has the Thunderhawk in it, which is super exciting. It's a chassis only recently discovered. And that thing is silly. It's uh, it's three Gauss rifles and four medium lasers on a XL engine platform. It's kind of absurd. And I was really impressed that they remain true to the, to the art. It looks like a Thunderhawk. Other than they put a hand actuator on its left arm, and it, it did not have a hand actuator on its left arm. It was one of those asymmetrical dealios with no hand on one side. What am I thinking of? It's only got one hand. The Hatamoto Chi? I 
I acknowledge your genetic superiority. Now get off my planet. Yeah, what is it? Hippity hoppity. Get off my property. I'm pretty sure there's there's some colorful words in that as well. The power of feudalism and the phone company turned into an Illuminati cult. Well, yeah. Um, although I, I got some things to say about Comstar too. They uh, they sat by and let it happen all the way up until the par part the clans were like, oh yeah, we're taking Terra. They were perfectly fine to stand by and let everybody die. You know, just like a corporation would. Oh man, it, is it really Comcast? It, it is definitely Comcast. And you know, Comcast is a phone company now. They do sell service. Kind of messed up that I could see Comcast legit just doing um, the Comstar thing. Having problem with your HBG communication uh, and you call in and they've got like level one technicians that just like try to upsell you stuff instead of actually help you oh have you have you considered that it might be your HPG antenna you know for as little as 10,000 C bills a month you could rent one from us <laughs> Face Alabama lost AT&T. Torians are, if anything, Space Haiti. I don't know much about the Torians. I, I know, I like their colors. All the way back to the Hitch Prince colonial structure, yeah. Now you gotta go back to M.A. Bell, the phone company. Have you talked to a Comcast agent? They are definitely evil. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So, when I first started the streams, uh, I was doing the game stream with TechnoRTN on Thursdays. And turns out, uh, the first Thursday of every month, there's someone who's eating a lot of bandwidth in my area. And they are... They must be a priority customer because uh, my service gets throttled while they're while they're eating up a lot of bandwidth, and um, my service gets throttled down to like 0 0.03 megabits per second upload speed, which is not enough to do anything that involves uploading. Um, and it killed a couple streams, and each time I would call. Um, I would call customer service and it would turn into like a two hour long call uh, with level one technicians who actually don't are unable to help you like they're, they're not trained to deal with this stuff they're trained to upsell you and uh, placate you um, and eventually uh, I, I lucked out and I was really nice to him and I got connected with a, not only did they connect me with like a, I guess a level two technician, someone who actually knew what they're doing, but the guy actually knew some shit about their system and he sent a command to my router and it fixed the problem. Um, and it was just really painful to deal with Comcast um, and the whole like, they're not allowed to acknowledge uh, that level two technicians exist and they're not allowed to tell you they can't help you even when they can't help you uh, anyhow not to rant about them I don't I, I have Comcast because I have no other option they have a 
my building has a contract with them, so they're my literal only choice. Uh, anyhow, Kami Grishka says the Torians are, well, I'll be a bit controversial and say they're more fun than the t Space Texas memes. Oh, that, that does sound fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds a lot of fun. Emery says, ask your father about the phone company that was to the 70s and early 80s what railroads were to the 1860s and the oil companies in the 1920s. Interesting. I wonder. We had, we had Bell South for the longest time where I'm from. Um, shit, I can still like picture their their logo. I wonder if it's the same company. Get some fuzz there. All right, we're so close to done with this here lining, and um, again, I've decided to do it this way to to keep this paint style accessible. Uh, for well, for right now, as well as when when the video will come out about this in the new year, um, but I can definitely say that even with the alcohol breaking down the um, the surface tension of the Nuln oil, it's not the same as a panel liner. So this might be a good application for a proper. Tamiya panel liner or an oil wash and I think if I, I were just doing my normal thing here I'd probably do it with an oil wash but yeah again I want to keep this super accessible kind of a theme on the channel these days I, I want the content if you're an experienced mini painter I want you to be able to come in and appreciate what's going on um, but also if you've like never painted a model before, I want folks to be able to follow what's going on here and do it. Nightbot again says octopuses only touch in situations of mating or aggression. Female octopuses sometimes do both strangling and eating the male after mating. That is the first fact that I find believable from Nightbot. But even then, like, is it just lying this whole time? So level two techs are ROM and they have a monopoly on service. They're comes <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They, are, I, I just, I see it clear as day. Like, give it, give it a thousand years. <laughs> Calm Star will still or Calm Cast will still be here, and they will be Calm Star. It's their their intergalactic communication branch. I mean, life does imitate art, not the other way around. <laughs> that is indeed hard to fap to, Nightbot. Although. Um, I guess it's not too strange. I, you know, I'm thinking of that uh, that famous piece of Shunga art, um, the the fisherman's wife's dream. Uh, although that's a squid and not an octopus, or is it? I'm pretty sure it's a squid. It could be an octopus. Fuck, I gotta. I'm not gonna show that on stream, of course, because it's uh, definitely TOS. Um, But if you don't know, the the fisherman's wife dream is a piece of Shunga art from 1814, the dream of the fisherman's wife. And it is an octopus. It's an octopus. It's an octopus. It's not a squid. Box Fox Suit says, Internet in the U.S. sucks, it's bad, and costs a fortune, and the companies aren't incentivized to actually improve because most of them have a monopoly or a biopoly and can charge high and cheap out. 
We can charge whatever they want. Go as low as possible because you can't go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Charles Fist says, I have so many t-shirt ideas from this Comstar discussion. Amazing. Oh, I'd, I'd love to see some, some t-shirt work that kind of skirts the edge of, like, um, copyright infringement. It'd be a fun logo to try and... Like, imagine the, the Comcast, like, red symbol they got going on but it's the the comstar star behind it yeah it'd be a lot of fun i just realized too i need to paint Oop, and they got to do a little more metallic i forgot the uh the grab handles here on the sides of this thingamabob let's do that okay so i think at this point we have the this thing is lined all the panels are done uh, we want to chip it up. So, um, before we chip it up, we need to do a symbol. And I'm going to refer back to our image from before. Oh, let me close that tab. <laughs> All right. So, this Wolverine that I was looking at. Let's open that in a new tab. Um, has got the the symbol on his left side so I think we're going to kind of follow this lead here and do the do the symbol to the left side so we'll put it right here and then we'll do the number over here um, so I'm going to need to get a reference material for Grey Death Legion. Grey Death Legion. Here we go. Open image and new tab. Here we go. Got our got our Grey Death Legion. All right, real simple. Um, let's work out the colors we're gonna need here for this. Uh, okay, so we're gonna want. A red and a dark red. Oh, fuck my elbow. God, that hurt. Ouch. Ouch, ouch. Not very funny, I promise you that. Let's see, can I reconstitute this? Man, that smell. That classic smell. Can I reconstitute this? No, I think that paint's too far gone. Pangea with the skull in the middle? Is that what it is? Pangea? I was going to try to use some blood red, but my ancient bottle of blood red is done and dead. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of... No, not blood angels red. I'm going to use a little bit of whole red. We're going to use a little bit of Mephiston Red. And then we'll get some Ushabti Bone. And do I have a good bone color? I'm going to use this um, Baylor Brown. And then I think I have a good off-white, yeah, and then ivory. And then we need a little bit of black as well. So we'll get some Vallejo black, and I think that should be enough to do the do the symbol. Okay, so for that, let's do um, I'm going to sop up what's left of this black and make a little room on my palette here yeah I did go a little overboard taking up space with the gray so we'll do this make a little space there we go all right a little bit of whole red don't need much it's a little symbol a little bit of little 
bit of very separated fist on red. Why is it so separated? There we go. Maybe two of those because it's a lot of red. We want to mix it up. All right, we got a red. We'll do a little bit of a little bit of Baylor Brown. Plenty enough. A little bit of Shop de Bone. Ushtabi, excuse me. It's canonical, but it's Ushtabi. Do our Ishtabi Bone. Yep, there we go. We'll do. This is Vallejo Model Color Ivory. There's the off-white for you, Vampire Tooth Red, or Vampire Tooth White. And we're going to do some black. All right, a little extra on the black. And now, for this application, we do want a tiny brush. So I'm going to grab this. Wet that tip there. Get this brush going. This is a 20-0 liner uh, from Princeton Art and Brush Co. Big recommend to these. They're synthetic, they're cheap, but they work. And, all right. See if I can't. Let's see what I can do here. Can I bring in this camera and get it to focus still? Let's bring us a little closer, a little closer. I'm gonna try and get a detail shot where y'all can see what's going on. All right. I hope that looks decent and isn't too like super out of focus. So anytime I'm working on a free hand. Get a little water here. I'm gonna put a little water on the palette. I guess y'all can't see the palette now. Let me do it like this. So y'all can see the colors as well. Alright, I'm gonna take a little bit of water and a little bit of my black. I shouldn't have done that. I just contaminated all that water with black. Whoops, let's just sop that up. Sop it up. There we go. All right, so we thin down our our black a little bit, and always when I'm working on a free hand, I'm gonna keep my reference material handy. There we go. God, can I get everything in this shot? Almost, just about. Okay, it's, my hand's crowded, but I, I can make this work. Um, I'm always gonna start with. A black shape always that um, outlines what I'm working on and it's slightly larger than what I'm working on so that when it's done it's gonna have a fine a fine black line um, yeah give it a fine black line and you know it's great at legion it's it's got a shape it doesn't have to be perfect but i'm going to try to i'm going to try to be faithful to the shape of the of the background splash all right there we go put a little more water out i hope that's decently in focus i can't it's hard to tell on this um little little phone screen that I'm on um, I'm gonna get a couple drops of water on the palette so I've water to grab from all right so we're gonna start with our let's 
start by cleaning out this brush. Let's start with our whole red and thin it down a bit. And we're just gonna, we're gonna do the whole background field first. So we'll start with this whole red. And the, the black that's down is still kind of wet a little bit. I hope that's in focus. Uh, if it's not, I apologize. Um, should be decent though. Hopefully. Alright, we're going to get our whole red first. Get that dark red base. Still getting black in it, so it's real dark. Alright. I'm going to take a little bit of water. A little bit of water. A little bit more water. And grab some of our red. Get this nice and thin. And we're going to start working in our red. Do a little bit of wet blending with it. Kind of leaving that whole red in the middle. That whole red black mixture stays in the middle. And as we get to the edge, I work more red into it. So what we should end up with is just basically straight Mephiston red on these edges. Again, I, I can't I can't tell if that's in focus, but it looks it, if it's if it's not I'm, I apologize. Um, I don't know what else I can do if it won't focus on this. Other than like get a different camera. Turn this back on. There we go. Alright. Working on our red. It's still the black is still wet and mixing into it. That's fine. I'm just gonna build up more build up more red. And actually, since that red towards the edge ain't ain't dry yet, or the black underneath the red, we're actually going to take a second and put a little black in the middle for the skull. So, we'll take our black and trace out where the skull's going to go. Right there. So, like, the lower jaw coming up to the cheekbones. This is not only preparing for the application of this, but also buying us a little time to get that that red area a little more dry. So we want to we want to keep moving forward, but also um, you know make it look right. I mean, ideally you could stop and let each layer dry, but it's just stream time management techniques that I'm doing. All right, so we got a black area for the for the skull. And we'll go back to our try to clean this brush. We're going to go back to our red. And we're start working that red, the brightest red towards the edges, which is now nice and dry, and we'll take the full strength Mephiston red. So, little tiny brush, little tiny bits of paint. Um, I'm kind of doing, um, I guess it's kind of stippling little tiny, tiny dots instead of like strokes with the paintbrush. And then we want to get that red very close to our black edge, like as close as we can manage without going over it. Um, the finer you get that that black outline, the less cartoony your your symbol is going to be. But 
you want to leave just a little bit in there so that it reads as as a little bit of separation between your symbol and the uh, the rest of the paint job. All right, so going around with our red, round and round we go, and I'm actually going to take a little bit of red and a little bit of that whole red and kind of mix them together and create an intermediary step. Do a little blending with it. Uh, this is another little like stream painting style time management to to buy a little time. Um, and actually, I think the red field comes in a little further. So we're gonna spread spread that out. Charles Fizz says, "Gotta bust out the micron <laughs> zero zero point five. Yeah, tiny tiny stuff. Actually, that'd probably be really good for the for the um." the eyes and the the nose on the skull I've been meaning to hit up Micromark and buy a set of they, they have these like really really fine brushes uh, that have like a bulb style handle that go down to 30 o I want to say is the smallest one but this is just a, a synthetic 20 o liner from the the Princeton art and brush co that I am such a believer in good stuff for the price like really good stuff for the price all right we'll do a little more blending of the of the whole red Mephist on red mixture excuse me all right it looks looks pretty decent um let's get at least the very edge of it in a nice solid red uh, it is a very red, just straight solid red. There's a bit of a gradient, but not much. All right, so we've got our red field. We've got this black in the center, and now the black has kind of dried out some. So we can start putting on our, and clean out the brush again. Too bad you didn't have time to do an oil wash. Yeah, it, it would look really good for an oil wash, and I think normally I would in this case. Um, uh, and, and I mean, technically I do before the, like the deadline for the model itself for the, for the icons paint submission, but I, I want to do this in the stream. And I, again, I want to make it super accessible to people. Um, but yeah, a really good candidate for an oil wash. Um, now we're going to take our Baylor Brown and just paint a vaguely skull-shaped blob. And I see that that black in the center is still not dry. We may have to just wait on that, actually. Yeah, I think we're going to have to wait on that a little bit. Just, you know, getting the shape of a skull there. It's kind of um, more or less what uh, the tutorial on the Camo Specs YouTube channel talk, talks about. I dip it in paint. Dip in the Micron in paint? It's not a bad idea. Having a tool like that, that size for dipping it in paint. Dip technique definitely saves time. No brush, no problem. Just dunk it in the bucket. I remember um, reading on the Dr. Faust's painting clinic like forums circa 2002 maybe. Uh, people were doing a People were already doing like contrast stuff then, like priming models white and um, doing the zenithal thing and then painting them with inks. And then there was a guy on there who was painting as Tyranids. He would do like, 
uh, paint a base color on the carapace and the flesh and then just dunk the whole thing in Minwax um, wood stain. And I guess that's kind of a thing now with Army Painter has the has the dunk, has the dip product. Anyhow, so now we're gonna grab a little bit of Ushabti bone and then gonna apply it on the plane of this skull's forehead. Just straight color. Like you don't don't have to worry too much about blending it. Like this is tiny. And then we're gonna keep going around the orbitals and hit the cheekbones. It's okay if you paint over where the eyes are gonna be, we're gonna put it back in with black. You come around the side of the orbitals and do the cheekbone. And then back up towards the center where the nose is. Basically we're just, we're reducing this shape. We're reducing the skull to, to shapes and, and filling them in with, with tiny paintbrush. We're going to do the, the jawbone, which I probably, I'm going to go back with a little Baylor Brown. We want to keep a little Baylor Brown underneath the, the cheekbones so we have a little depth. And the same with like right in between the eyes. bridge of the nose. That should stay Baylor Brown. Yeah. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back and hit the hit the chin again. Make sure it's defined. And actually it has a kind of stylized Kind of a stylized um, jawline. So let's try to replicate that now. Dips are green stuff. Green stuff world does the the dips. Pretty sure Army Painter had one. Fairly certain the Army Painter has a dip wash. Um, I generally don't use a lot of um, green stuff world products because they're their shipping is exorbitant. All right, so now we're gonna grab our ivory. Actually, no, sorry. I'm gonna do the up, upper, what do you call it, maxilla? Like where the teeth connect. All right, there we go. We got that idea of a shape here. Now we're gonna take our ivory. We're gonna start doing dots for teeth little tiny dots and there, there's like there's no way you're getting all those in there so like don't sweat it just like give it some dots try to leave a little separation in between them and then we'll take a little bit of our ivory and our Bishop deep bone mix it together and we're gonna highlight some stuff with the brow ridge Brow ridge. There we go. Brow ridge. Little dot on the cheekbones. There we go. We go back to our black and carefully put the eyes in. And then the nose. I need to give a little more definition between those two eyes. So we're going to dip back into our Ushabti bone here. And same underneath the eye. Need a little more definition. It's a bit of a back and forth process. Real easy. It is not hard to freehand. It is hard to freehand well. But like, that's good enough to me looks fine to me 
Matt Holmberg says, oh man, I remember a guy at the game store using Minwax and dumping some Imperial Fists in like 95 and our minds exploded. We just discovered craft floral paint were drunk with power. You could just spray paint an army color you wanted wild. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're giving me giving me some serious nostalgia there. I'm a little, a little late to that party, I guess. I want to say like 98... Is probably when I first started painting, like um, sitting at, down at the dinner table with my dad, and him teaching me and my brother how to how to um, uh, dry brush his Hero Quest models. But yeah, there we go. We got a, a nice little freehand. Like that's that's more than good enough. You can see at arm's length distance, it works. It's it is perfectly serviceable is it perfect no is it close enough yes and that's i'm that's really what matters like you're reducing these shapes to you're reducing these symbols to shapes like you know if it, if it works it works it's it's all i'm worried about all right let's see if i can't get this shit set back up to where it's zoomed out again and we can oh I need to put on the um, I need to put on the numeral do I have I would I was about to say I'm gonna put 69 on it but no I'm gonna put 66 isn't that the thing from isn't that the thing from uh, from the Star War execute order 66 Pretty sure it was. Ship it, haha, -ha, looks nice. Yeah, thank you. It, it's, it do the job. All right, now I can do my favorite thing to do, which is to work with um, transfers on camera. So we're just gonna, we're gonna cut out this 66. Just, it 66 seems right to me for this all right there we go and we make sure to make, always recommend if you got your fighting piranha graphics just give a little slit on the front of it so you can put your transfers back in the package um, it's very easy if you're working around paint and your your workstation to get a little water on it and just ruin that whole fucking sheet uh-oh everything lock up for a second is it me is it my Wi-Fi looks like no okay is it okay over there okay it looks like it's working Shoo. everything locked up for a second on my little monitor here all right let's hang those back up uh, again, I apologize for the ridiculous amount of spam from Nightbot. I'm going to try to dial that in um, here soon. I, I thought I had it a good setup on it. it it's, it's a little too spammy. Uh, stream messed up for a second. Yeah. Is it is it back for everybody? Is it working all right? It like... Um, it locked up for me. Georgia wild oak leaves contain a compound that causes cancer in giraffes, but there have no been giraffes in North America for 17 million years. That is a fun factoid. Okay, so my technique for doing these, so that I bet you y'all can't even see that with the reflection there. It's the tiniest little dot. Where is it even at? Can I see that on stream now? Not really. Where's it? Yeah, it's okay. Here we go. I'm going to move it to the side so maybe that reflection's not so bad. Where's it even at? <laughs> okay. So we got a little little tiny... It's it's flickering again for me. All right, let me, let me look at the... Let me look at the control room real quick. Max, Max. 
well, the thing is, it's... It's not... It's, it's this light. It's my... It's my desk lamp. I need a more... A more better light. Uh, but the thing is, like, it's really good for filming. When I'm, like, at this angle at, and not aiming straight down at it. I think I need two lights coming in this way with that are, like, this style with the softbox. But hopefully... Yeah, okay. I think it's... Music making me think, like, old fantasy star. Yeah, very nice. I actually can't hear the music playing back. I really need to set it up where I can, actually. Okay, so my technique for doing these... I don't mess with like a container or nothing. I'm going to take my little cutout and put it right on my cutting mat. And I'm going to grab some water out of this pipette and I'm going to drip it right on top of it. And just let that sit for a second. <clears throat> and then I'm going to want a nice flat pair of tweezers. That's not my flat tweezers. Oh shit, where are my flat tweezers? Oh no, they should be in here. I don't know what I've done with them. I'm not about to dig things apart. All right, we'll use these ones. Make sure I keep the lid. And then we want a brush. Good, but we'll just use the same brush I was using earlier. These are two round. Get our model. I guess I'll do it upside down. So I can kind of hands free it a little bit. And oh this, this is always so shitty I'm trying to do this. This is really hard to film. But we're gonna try. Alright. We're gonna get our 66 in position here. And then we get our brush wet as well. And we're going to kind of hold it in position with the wet brush and gently let off of one end of the tweezers and kind of get it in position. Take our wet brush and you got to slide it off the backing while also moving the backing away without tearing it at the same time. There we go, get the backing off. And now our transfer is not straight at all. So we're going to saturate it again, really saturate it down. Until it starts to float up again and then we can take our brush and just nudge it and get it into place I know people use microsol micro set I haven't tried it out yet I don't have any and now we're gonna take a bone dry brush and we're gonna wick up that moisture wick up all that moisture Wick up all that moisture. Wick it all up. There we go. 66. We got number 66. Kind of want to put more 66s on it, honestly. But I, I think less is more. We'll just do the one that's fine. Besides, we're about to heavily weather this thing. Holy shit, what's happened here? Is my stream closed? need to be able to see the chat now my little stream monitor closed let me pull this back up Why, why'd you close there buddy why'd you close there buddy all right are we back we back we back i can see chat let's turn it to all messages 
Bagels are named after a specific type of thigh welt that forms when riding in stagecoaches too frequently. Funny. Christmas Island crab migratory swarms are considered very erotic by the strange, confused, bored people who live there. You know, that's that's weird, but like I could see where that association would come from because it's like a it's a breeding thing. Uh, it is weird, but you know it is what it is. I I'm about to put two more 66s on this. Let's do. Do I have smaller 66s? Let's see. I have two 66s left that are small. I think they might be too small. No, they're perfect. We're going to do it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. What was that? O'Reilly? Did the... Bill O'Reilly? Did the we'll do it live thing? He's like going off. All right, again, we're gonna cut off our, cut off our numbers and, you know, be aware of the water that's on the cutting mat. Make sure to put our, put our transfers away because these things are expensive, you know. They are kind of expensive, $5 a sheet, but they're nice to have. And honestly, when you're doing commissions, Having a, a full set of numbers to, to add to them really spices up the, the end product. All right. Again, we're gonna chop this, chop the numbers, and chop them right in the middle, as close as we can to the numbers without damaging them. There we go. And I think we're gonna need to do these one at a time. Fucking thing sucks. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, and we still have a little droplet of water here, so we're going to submerge our tiny 66 in it. Um, the, um, the TTRPG player in me uh, is hearing myself say 6D6 every time I say this. But yeah, put our little 66 down. Um, and we're going to do it on the legs. I think one on each side will look great. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Um, we can test this thing by rubbing on it. Give it a little, little rub. And it's not ready until the, uh, the numbers float free. Which will be any second now. There we go. It just... It's like... It goes from being not ready to... It's ready. Much like an avocado. And we can go ahead and start prepping the next one while we're at it here too. There we go. Extra drop of water. Alright, so... Let's prop this lad up. And get our 66 in place. And two hand the thing, slide it off, get it in position, wet it down, nudge it around. It is a little small in retrospect. That's what she said. Um, but that's fine. It'll work. We got a 66 on that size. It, it is. It's a little small. It's fine. It's a detail. Alright. We'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Real quick, like. In the 1980s, the founder of Pringles, Frederick Bauer, requested to be buried in a Pringle can. His children honored the request. I again, I don't believe it. I, I do not believe anything Nightbot has said tonight. It is a liar and a cheat. All right. 
I have very nearly botched this. Woo! There we go. All right, let's get our 66. And get it kind of in place. And slide that off. Simultaneously grabbing the backing. There we go. I tell you, the, the first like 12 of these that I did were really, really not fun. I mean, they're still not fun now, but they're, you know, they're doable. I'm, I can at least do it on camera. All right. So we've got numbered 66. Those are ready. Um, we're going to mix up a sponge chipping. Sponge chip in. We're going to get a sponge. We're going to get our colors. I'm going to use my normal color mixture that I usually use for this. So we're going for Vallejo black and hull red together. I want it dark, but also a little bit of that, like, it's almost a um, German oxide red primer type color. And it's a big model, so we'll do a double load. Here we go. So it's equal parts black and hull red. All right. Stir it up till it's mixed. Absolutely no worries about the thinning here. Honestly, it I find that it performs a little better if it's just a tiny bit thicker anyways. You don't really want it um, to spread. It's not supposed to go on smooth. It's supposed to go on little patches. All right. Let's get our wipe-off towel ready. And we're going to take a chunk of this foam off the back and then we want to rough up the the regularity of the edges here just pluck at it some have it have it have I'm trying to avoid sharp edges uh, that are long Kind of a lumpy round shape. We want some points rather than long sharp edges. That's good there. And we're gonna take a. I'm gonna take a um, pair of tweezers. And give it a little dipski. We're gonna remove most of the paint, most of it till it's a little stuff. Henry Ford declares his company would never name a vehicle after any sort of dolphin because he felt they were smelly and lewdly shaped creatures. You know, that sounds plausible. Alright, so I'm testing for the like chip effect instead of round dots of color. And we'll start, we'll start on a more nondescript area back here. Screw these tweezers. <laughs> let's just do, let's just do it with our hands. All right. And we're just going to fucking go at this lad. Gal, lad, same, it's, it's all the same here. Called it both. All right. I'm just gonna put some chips all over this model. Chip it up real good. I 
I could probably use a bigger sponge. I'm just used to using the tiny sponge for, for small projects. The trick here is that, you know, less is more. And if you, if your sponge is oversaturated, you'll, you'll stick it on there. And then like, you'll have way too much in one dap. And it's, it's way easier to build up a whole bunch of little tiny specks than, um, or it's way better to do that than to just end up with blobs that look wholly unnatural. So just like, just like dry brushing, you want like a mostly empty tool. And the beauty is like, if, if you have removed the paint well enough, this works at any scale even down to, you know, six millimeter chips or like chipping your, like, okay, right there. That blob, that's too much. It's too much. So I'll need to go back in and, and hit that with, I'm still getting too much. Hit it with a brush later to kind of balance it off. And, you know, it's it's semi-random. I'm controlling where the sponge is going, but it'll favor edges, which looks like almost believable, realistic weathering. I'm just gonna work around the neck, work around our model. A little bit here, a little bit there, a lot of bit here. A lot of bit there. Yeah, I need a bigger chunk of sponge. This is lunacy. Let's do a full size one, actually. Christ. Here we go. Let's do a bigger piece of like that. There we go. Much better. Stabs, stabs. Don't be afraid to chip right over your free hands. Makes them look even better. Fear not the chips. Eat the chips, enjoy the chips. chips, I mean chips, not french fries. Or name the company's budget model Pinto. He felt if you called it in Fuego, nobody would buy it. Yeah, but you know, did they know that the Pinto would be on fire before it was on the markets? Was that a known problem before it hit the markets? All right. So I'm going to try and get some chips on that 66. There we go. This one too. Oh yeah. Switching to a bigger sponge here helped a lot. Locust Labs, man with a rifle. Yeah, indeed. It's coming along nicely. I decided to simplify the paint job on this one to make it accessible. And also, I want to finish this entire model, ideally, before I log off. Where are we at? Four hours. I predict I'm going to have this model done in the next hour. This is a fantastic sculpt. For those of you who don't know, this model is sculpted by Locust Labs. Um... You want to get your hands on some fabulous sculpts uh, of some classic designs reimagined in a modern fashion. Check them out over at patreon.com slash locust. I think it's underscore labs. I, I put it in the description, I believe. Uh, and if you don't want to kick in 
monthly and get your hands on these fabulous sculpts, make sure to check them out on Cults 3D where you can get those models individually. Really fabulous models that, that print out really well. Um, I believe there are pre-supported ones as well, though I, I tend to prefer my own supports personally. Um, and then lately I've been using um, shit, what's the software for Frozen? I've been using Cura, I think is the name of it. And it, it does some really nice auto supports. Although this one kind of mucked up the back a little bit. Um, the auto supports did. Other than that, it printed out fantastically. Okay, so we got our chipping on there. And now we need to accentuate that chipping. So the next step, we're going to swap up. Ooh, ambitious. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I can do it. Double pew indeed. Locus Lab says, I just put up a not atlas. Yeah, that, that's a really fun one. Um, I'm kind of legit excited for that one. Uh, do the whole Steiner, you know, the meme, meme squad. All right, so... Earlier we were working with our jet exhaust. We don't want that anymore. We want the dura aluminum. So this is a lighter, lighter color of the Vallejo metal color. And we're gonna put a little down. Bink bonk. And we're gonna get back out our little brush from before, our nice sharp workhorse. This and we're basically we're looking for spots like right here where I screwed up and got too much uh, chipping on it and we're just gonna like try and trace the sharp edge and jab some jab some silvery spots on areas that have a lot of a lot of the, uh, the chipping color applied but we also want to you know apply this in little little dots you don't want just like solid silver and then on some of the edges you can even go as far as to use the edge highlighting technique where you use the side of the brush and basically edge highlight your chip with silver and it just oh man add so much to the chipping to add that little tiny bit of extra on top a little here a little there um, and of course you know this this can take forever but we're gonna try to go really quick and just get it done because we still got lens jeweling to do and the base which if I can't get the base done on stream I'll still count it as a win and then finish the, it before bed um, I don't want to go over five hours I think that's pushing it a little too far but yeah also by the end of December you'll have gotten two assault mechs a heavy mech a medium a light and two vehicles for the price of one patreon so that's insane yeah exactly and you know these days uh, resin is so inexpensive that i'm just i'm finding more and more that good quality stls are are largely the way to go um you know and i still get excited about official sculpts here and there but honestly when it comes to battletech i like art that kind of reflects the older style so it's another reason i am super fond of the work by Locust Labs. It's kind of in the middle, somewhere in between um, like the MechWare Online styling and the Catalyst Labs styling and the old original art. But in my mind, it's a little closer to the to the old originals, which I love. That's, that's why I generally play with Ironwind Metals, honestly. Don't get me wrong, I've got some Catalyst stuff. 
but like that that last lance I painted up was all Ironwind metal stuff. Video coming sometime soon. I still gotta get the Octavia one out. Um, but now that the semester's wrapping up, we should be able to really grind in some some videos for y'all. trying to work quickly here not waste the rest of my time on this but yeah it, it adds a lot uh, on the Marauder video I ended up spending about six hours uh, just doing this stage on that one and it, it it was very heavily weathered and it looked really good um, but I think if you either want to go all out and do like a, a super heavy level of, of it or just do this kind of approach where less is more a little bit here and there goes a long way it's kind of my take on um, the the chipping that I see uh, Night Shift do scale modeler on YouTube if you're not familiar, big recommend. Great channel, great content. He just put out a diorama in the last couple days. That's too much, too much, too much, too much. Too much. This is the brush licking in action there for cleaning purposes. In the late 90s, I would buy used Hobby Japan issues with a lot of people adding Zimmerit textures and Dunkelgeld paint to modified Xeon Max extra long skirt armor like World War II Panthers. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Lux Levs, all right, I gotta go to back, back to bed. Love y'all. Thanks for stopping by. Um, and thanks for running this contest. Looking forward to the next one as well. And make sure to check out Locust Labs on Patreon and Cults 3D. Get some hands on some fantastic models like this Rifleman. Or, or this not Rifleman, excuse me. We all know how aggressive companies can be about their IP. like there's some serious chipping here get a little aggressive so we're gonna make that very silver we'll get a little bit over here cha 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 and here and there all right a little bit on the uh, radar dish up here Yep. Uh, back here. A little there, a little there. There's some spots here where the the sculpt kind of got marred. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the silver chip in there. Just you know, here and there and everywhere. All right. I think I'm about to move on to the next step. I mean, who, if you miss some that, that would look good, you can always go back and add it later, right? You don't want it to be completely covered in silver. It's already quite silvered from the, from the, um, what's that color? The jet exhaust. But that's a good spot though. Whole bunch right here. I'm gonna try to send it back in a streaking motion. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. All right, lads, coming along. Um, what's next? Oh, I'll tell you what's next. We're gonna do that glowing effect I was talking about earlier. So, to do that, I want to do. A little bit of that and a little bit of 
this and a little bit of the white. Here we go. There's a few spots I want glowing red or glowing orange. So we're gonna take a little bit of phalanx yellow, a little bit of phalanx yellow. Just uh, find a spot on the palette for it. How about right there? Now this is excessive. This is kind of um, skirting the edge of running out of time, if anything. But I want the effect. I think it's going to add a lot to it. A little bit of contrast to go with that little bit of red. Nightbot says Apple paid a couple $1.7 million for their plot of land, which was only worth $181,000. Again, I don't believe that. I think you're full of shit, Nightbot. I think you've been not lying all night long. All right. So there's a few spots I wanted to be glowing, like orangey yellow glowing effect. And I just realized I need a little bit more because they're kind of sizable. There's two spots and they're in pairs. So we're going to do this and that vent and then this and that. And I guess these, these here too. So we're just going to take our, we're going to take our yellow, which needs to be thinned a little bit, put a drop of water in it. Take our yellow and I'm just going to fucking coat them. Bloom. And it's okay if it's a little sloppy, it's fine. Because we're gonna do like a like a glazing type orangey effect over it when it dries. Hit the yellow, hit the yellow, hit the yellow. There we go. Same here. And we're doing this after after the chipping, because well, it's it's glowing hot. It wouldn't make it sense if there was metal chips on top of it. I kind of am picturing in my mind that some of these vents are for excess heat and some of these vents are for like direct fusion engine heat coming out. And in my mind, it's these things on the front and those on the back are just venting that like running heat. So we're gonna coat these in yellow. And then the next step when they dry, we're gonna hit them with a little Griffhound orange and then hit them with yellow and then glaze on some orange. A little bit of back and forward. Alright. It's okay if the yellow spills out a little bit because it's going to be kind of glowy anyways. Do a little time management while it's drying and we're going to start blacking out areas that are going to have lens jeweling so we still have black on the palette let's do make sure i'm not getting yellow on the mech from holding it i'm going to put some black on the medium lasers Try not to try not to get it on the housing. It's okay if a little bit gets there, but better if you don't. And then we got these like rangefinder majigger thingy mobs. So they're also gonna get blacked out. Same here. And then the end 
inside of the barrels while we have the black out and get black. Get in there real good. We're going to do something fun with those here in a bit. Towards the end when we get there, that is. Black that out. There's another little rangefinder type deal thing right here. It wants to be black. And the black is going to form like a unified foundation for all the little lens details. Kind of makes them cohesive in a way. All right, we got a couple more medium lasers. And then now we're going to black out the cockpit and try to leave the, um, the like frame, uh, gray without hitting it. Could be rough, but I'm just going to go carefully. We're, we're letting that yellow dry anyways. So just real careful and deliberate in your application and of course again this is 15 millimeter so it's a little a little easier there's one next one I think I think this is all one panel without a break right there so we're just, it's kind of a wrap around. Rifle lead. All right, I'm thinking the, the lens jeweling, the cockpit canopy is gonna be green. Um, sitting at oof shit four hours and 26 minutes hmm might not make my five hour thing um I really don't want to do a stream longer than five hours I've done it a couple times but I try not to make it a habit I did that one uh editing stream for the Armored Core video and it was like it's like eight hours or something. It was like soul crushing. Plus like after five hours of streaming I've like heard the, the playlist fucking four or five times at that point. Getting there though. Shit, at this point I'm just gonna play it by ear, y'all. If, if I gotta call it, I gotta call it. But time is a factor. This thing's gotta get done. sure this needs to be done by like 8 a.m. or something. I, I don't remember exactly what the time difference deadline was. I forget. I'd have to check Discord. But... 
don't know. We'll see what we can get done in a half hour. I do have a technique I want to show off and share. Before it's over. Okay. We got our cockpit blacked out. We got our lenses blacked out. We got the phalanx yellow is not dry yet. I actually see some some spots that need a little bit of the chipping while we're waiting on that. So let's hit that real quick. That needs it for sure. And then this whole thing got completely, completely covered in, in the chipping color. I guess the brush was just, or the sponge was overly saturated. So we're going to do like a broken up application of the this color. Yeah. There we go. Let's tie it in with a little bit more chipping next to the nose. Alright. Okay, so we gotta wait on that, that yellow to dry. So let's do our medium lasers. And in my mind, medium lasers are red, always. They've always been red. Uh, I know that that's not the case anymore. Um, but you know, what, what cares about Canon, really? Really, who cares about Canon? I need a little bit of this and that, and the red and the white. Do some lens jeweling. So we're going to swap to a smaller brush. That's a 20-0. I don't think I need to go that small. I guess these are both 20-0s. Let's pull out this one. It's a really sharp tip. And do some lens jeweling here. So we're going to take our Mephiston Red. a little bit of black put them next to each other and make a blend of the two so we want we want a really dark blending down to red type color I'm gonna put it on pretty much the whole laser all right, empty our brush. Grab a little bit more of fist on red. And we're gonna put it to the bottom right. And we're gonna blend that lead. Blend that lens. Why is everything a lead? I don't know where that's coming from. All right get that foundation down and grab a little bit of the yellow a little bit of the red mix it together get a real bright orange and we're gonna trace a little crescent at that bottom corner there there we go and looking at it there's not enough red we're gonna build up some more red into our black red yeah go back a little red just it, it's back and forth like i hope that's that's kind of come across a little bit tonight that like you don't have to get it perfect on the first pass and if you're working with wet blending especially you can work it back and forth till it works and like that looks pretty good and I'm satisfied with it 
So now we'll do the same thing right next to it. Get our black red, basically the whole thing. And take our red red, do the like two thirds of what we just did, blend them together, take our phalanx yellow and our red and mix it together, get an orange till it looks right, pop it in the corner, go back to our red, you know, just, just again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth till it looks right. quick not overthought just you got a technique do the technique rinse repeat move on put a little paint down feather it out improve the crescent all right Next, same thing, once again, black and red, mix it together. We now have black red, Let's put our black red down. There we go. We'll take our red, we'll put our red down. We'll empty our brush and feather the tip and blend them together. Zippy zap take our yellow mix in a little red till it looks like the orange the same orange we've been using and we'll hit the bottom right with a crescent there we go crescent's too fat we'll take our red pop it in not enough black red so we'll take a little black red and we'll Work it in and we'll bring it up. All right, good enough. We'll move to the next one. <laughs> Can y'all tell I'm losing my damn mind at this point? It has been a long day, but I want to get this done. All right, black, red, on. Red, red. Starting, hitting it again. Our orange red. Well, I guess it's just orange. It's not really orange red. I'm gonna put it on. There we go. Bottom right corner. Too fat. Need a little more. A little more red looking good now we're going to take our we're going to take our Liquitex white ink put a single drop of it down and we're going to go back to our 20 tiny sharp brush and we're going to take, a, take our take our white ink and we're going to put a dot in the upper left corner opposite of the crescent bink Bonk, bink, bonk. Got four red medium lasers. And actually looking at these, that crescent ain't popping. So I'm gonna take a little bit of our phalanx yellow and I'm gonna trace a real sharp, real sharp edge of yellow. Actually, I think it needs to be orange. Let's just do it with the Fire Dragon Bright. Lad it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is this obsession with lad, but it's a lad. All right, yeah. The, the yellow is too bright, so we're gonna tamp it down 
with the Fire Dragon Bright. Yeah, much better. I'm just gonna take the, we're taking this straight out of the pot, not even sweating it. Just the tiniest little bit there in the corner. Just need to bring the contrast up a little bit more. You want some serious contrast between light and dark. All right. One left. There we go. Yeah, that looks a lot better. A lot more believable. Okay, so from here, we're gonna examine our Phalanx Yellow we're waiting on to dry. And it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit it with a second layer real quick like with this um, with this two brush we want some nice yellow coverage on these glowy spots so let's get it let's get it very yellow very yellow It's a decision. I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy the decision. I don't know if it was the right decision, but it was a decision. And this is where we live. I'm gonna stick with that decision. Okay. Get these nice and bright yellow. Because when they, when it dries, we're gonna hit it with um, the um, contrast paint I got out. It's like Griffhound Orange or something. I think it's the name of it. And turn it into an orangey area. All right, now we want we want um, a green, a dark green. And I actually usually use this real shitty paint for it. So we're gonna take our we're gonna take our apple barrel hunter green. The really shitty low quality craft paint. We're gonna put a little out. There we go. Mix a little water in it. Two drops, this should be good. I don't want to reactivate that white now that I'm thinking about it. All right, we're going to take some Citadel Warboss green, which is separated out as hell. Holy moly. Tells you how much green I've been using lately. Now, ain't that some shit, though, that my... 10 year old bottle of hunter green i'm not even joking it's 10 years old fine comes out of the container absolutely fine gw paint i, I ain't touched it in like two months and it's like really really separated all right get our war boss green and then we're also going to get what are you going to green the large lasers Oh, wait, are they large lasers? I thought it was two AC5s and four medium lasers. I'm going to green up the cockpit, but am I screwing up? You're right, they are large lasers. Good call, good call. No, that means i got to redo those and make them blue, is what I usually do for large lasers. Uh, good call. Thank you. Thank you. I did screw up. Hey, and that's just part of the process. What am I thinking of with four medium lasers? Is that the catapult? It's got the, the two LRM-15s and four medium lasers? Or was it the... Jaegermech is two AC-2s, two AC-5s. Yeah, we'll correct that here in a minute. All right, so we're taking our green. 
I'm gonna take a little bit of black. And we're gonna do the same damn thing. We're gonna make a black green with the hunter green from 10 years ago. And try not to get any on the the frame. I'll work it on. On the green. On the green. Alright. And then we're going to take our War Boss green. And I should probably put some water out so we can thin it as we go. Red is fine for mediums, but green for large lasers seems sad yeah there were always I don't know where I got blue from but I just I make my large lasers blue um, I'm not sure if that's a reference I saw somewhere or just like a habit Just gonna mix in and blend out and take a little water and do a little wet blending back and forth. You know, it is funny that now that I'm looking at it, they're literally large lasers. They're liter they're bigger than the medium lasers. Damn, man. Committing sins on camera. Let's see. Where are we at? Four minutes, four hours, 45 minutes. Jeebus. I am not going to finish this on stream. Especially now that I've made a mistake and need to correct it. So I think what I'm going to do. One, I need a break. I need to stand for, for like five minutes at least before I sit back down but I want to show y'all a neat trick if I could find do I have a piece of it here no yes yes is that is that right surely I got a piece in here Alright. Maybe there's a black one in here. Let's take a peek real quick. I feel like blue makes the lasers feel hotter. Yeah, I agree. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I want to show you all a cool trick before I log off. I'm going to finish this model. I just, I need a break and I don't want to make y'all wait for ages. Plus, like, some of y'all been here for a hot minute on this long ass stream tonight. This is a long stream. I usually go for three hours. A reminder that the um, the uh, paint stream is intended to be three hours every Wednesday. So next episode will be Wednesday. We'll probably be jumping back into Fatania again. But anyhow, without further ado, uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about powders weathering powders and I want to show you all a product I don't know if I've shown this in a stream before but I'm gonna pull it out right now so I've got this I don't remember where it came from I think it's it was from like the Amazon return place but I got these Mungo pastels real cheap super cheap hard pastel sticks and these are great um, obviously not every color in this set is going to be useful, but the hard chalky pastels work really well. Look at all them colors. Uh, most importantly, I got a black one right here, which I'm going to use to put heat burns 
on the gun barrels, which I would do this at the end normally, but um, I want to do it now to show it to y'all before I log off and take a break. So, um, I have this little coaster, this ceramic coaster, specifically for grinding pastels on. It's all it's used for. Um, but you can get your get you your pastel excuse me um <clears throat> and get you a um an exacto blade and just scrape off some of that pastel and get you a little pile of of this the the chalky pastels not the like soft waxy ones but the chalky ones uh will break down into uh, basically straight pigment powder. And it is way cheaper than buying some weathering powders. Like, uh, considerably cheaper. Um, so, I'm gonna chop up this powder. And then you're gonna get you a, an old ratty brush. I think I have one up here. Will that work? Yeah, I think this will work. All right. And once you've got your powder set up and ready to go, um, you're gonna take it and pick it up in this brush and start just applying it. And build up the effect. And it, it's real subtle. Like, it's kind of surprising with the black that it's so subtle, but like, it's gonna produce this like ultra matte finish on the, uh, on the gun tips, which looks awesome. I think you could get the same effect with like um, that um, the Stuart Simple cu Culture Hustle Black what are they on? 4.0 now? I think you could get a similar effect here but you're wanting that black weathered appearance I guess you couldn't quite get it with that paint because this is a lot more subtle, but you'd get a similar, you get a similar feel. All right, we're gonna hit this. I'm gonna rub that powder on it, make it real black. I was looking for a charcoal stick to do this. Charcoal will also work for this specific application of black, but you just you know build up the effect. I don't know if that really shows up on the camera here too well, but like you get this heat stress blackened tip, this really matte finish. And that's what I was going to wrap everything up with, but I think I have another hour in this model actually, and I don't want to do a six hour stream. <laughs> And I want to take a break and stretch my legs. So uh, I'm going to have to leave it unfinished for y'all. Uh, Tamiya weathering powder does stick nicely though. Yeah, I think that's that's a big advantage you'll get of the weathering powders. They're going to be better at chemically uh, adhering to the model itself. Whereas a pastel um, would rely more on the tooth of your paper. Country Fried Mini style, just straight up use shaved charcoal. I I was looking for my charcoal stick. I usually keep one here for this purpose, but I do have the pastel. And I mean, I hope that's coming through, like the difference in this to that. It's 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 like this subtle blend that you've worked in, but it's also like super matte, which is really nice uh, for this. And the final project will be up. So, for those of y'all in the stream or caught the stream via the algorithm, 
either way i think that's all y'all are going to get of this model on stream unfortunately i'm not going to finish up the the glow here i'm not going to finish up the green i've still got to repaint the the large lasers that i screwed up uh but i need a break and i'm going to take a break uh but y'all have seen the airbrushing of the gray the sponge chipping the the edge chipping the panel lining freehanding how to do lens jeweling i think i've covered a lot in this one if you want to see this finalized product um i don't think i'm going to share it to the youtube at large you need to come over to the country fried minis discord and i'll post it there when it's done um again this is for the locust labs icons um Locust Labs Icons Painting Competition, which is about to wrap up in like 12 hours or something like that. Um, but yeah, come on over to the Country Fried Minis Discord. Uh, link in the description. Uh, you'd be more than welcome. I'd love to see what you're working on. Um, if you liked it, let me know. Um, you got any advice for me? You didn't catch it live? Drop it in the comments down below. Um, and of course, I've been Cameron on behalf of Country Fried Minis. This is our paint stream. These will be every Wednesday, 6 p.m. PST. Uh, this week was a little weird because of school, but that's wrapping up. In any case, I want y'all to remember to be happy while you're painting. And of course, to remember that your participation in this community is what makes me happy while I'm painting. Thank y'all for watching. And I will catch y'all next time. Take it easy.